Welcome one, welcome all, welcome back. I am Bridger, and let's take a look. This is turn four of Cataclysm, a second world war, and uh, you've probably been following the other videos in the series. If not, I highly recommend you go check those out. It will give some context, but it is currently 1939, or the very beginning of 1939, the, the turn four here. We've got uh, this turn plus three more after it, guaranteed. The game will end in the 1945-46 turn, assuming it does not end earlier. We are, have hit global war last turn when the uh, the Japanese went to total war. The current situation in Europe is that Britain launched an all-out assault on Germany, trying to collapse them really early uh, when they were weak. And uh, unfortunately, Britain severed her alliance with France and the United States. So that uh, leaves them at war with the entire Axis force. France and the U.S. could join in on that war this turn. They just need to get their commitment up. The Soviet Union is happily not engaged with anybody at this point. They're just building up their war machine. Uh, they can now go to total war since the Japanese have done it and caused global war to be in effect. And that is certainly what they're going to look to do this turn. They get an extra resource in the Urals when they do that. And uh, it allows them to just build up their massive force pool for uh, rolling over the Middle East and uh, the European countries here. Uh, maybe not even starting a war, just trying to win on victory points at the end. We'll see. I mean, they'd be happy to, for the other two sides to slug it out. Over here, Japan has basically finished conquering China. The Chinese communists are still in Hubei, but uh, that is controlled by the Germans. Uh, now, during this, the Civil War Resolution, I believe it's still going to cause them to expand, but since the Germans are the patron, they're going to get to choose where the Chinese communists expand into. They'll probably expand it again soon, and then the following turn into Xinjiang, assuming that the uh, uh, well, if the USSR doesn't have any forces there. But yeah, the Japanese are probably going to have to go beat up on the Chinese communists uh, before this is all said and done. They're not going to want them to expand and take away all their victory points, but we'll see how that goes. The Americans are sitting pretty in Jap Japan and New Guinea and Java. They grabbed a bunch of those by diplomacy last game, uh, last turn. So let's see how this goes. We're going to production, and the production phase starts with gaining flags. Let's hop over to our player board window here. The Germans gain two flags. By the way, the Germans have two fortresses and a fleet currently in their production holding box, which were built at the end of last turn, which is why they came out this turn. And then Il Duce comes in for Italy. Japan has an offensive in its production holding box, which is very valuable for them going into a turn where they're at war. The Soviet Union can't gain a flag for free since they're at military reforms. They are at steady stability, though. I believe they are going to attempt a stability test, 3d6, 70% chance of passing this and they are successful. They got a 3, 5, and a 6. So that gives them a flag. Well, they get a flag, I should say, and then they also had to stuff for that stability test. The French get a flag because status quo has been over for quite a while. So did the British and the Americans. Come on, there we go, American flag. All right, now we go through the actual production steps, starting with the French, who have two resources in Paris and Provence. They lost all their other cubes on the map, but they still have those two core resources that they started the game with, so that's great for them. Uh, what are they going to build with those two resources? Well, you know, tanks wouldn't be out of line here if they're going to be doing any counterattacking. If Japan, I mean, sorry, if Germany's poised to attack the United Kingdom, France is looking at this like an opportunity to hit Germany in its backyard. However, Germany now has quite a few land armies. They don't need all of those to invade the United Kingdom. They really only need to bring that tank army over. So maybe an air force is just a better use of France's resources. They have none right now, and that's kind of concerning. Although... Although, Lombardy looks tasty. Lombardy, Italy's northern area is just open because right now they're guarding the German flank against the Soviet Union. Italy is left very exposed um, against a French attack there. And man, if they can collapse Italy, whew, that is, it's hard to say no to that. But they need the Air Force, really, in order to do that. They're not going to get any other advantages. So they're going to build the Air Force, uh, so that's going to go in the production holding box. And they're going to build with the other... Oh, they do have one offensive already. Do they want to use the other resource to build an offensive here? Yes. You know why? Because when they increase their commitment to mobilization, they can use that offensive to build two things if they wanted to, including a land upgrade. But they definitely want that air out 
first. And that's going to have to go into Paris, right? That's the thing. They can help cover the United, the United Kingdom if they can get an alliance with them. If they, I mean, we have to threaten Lombardy to cause the Italians to pull back and at least get the, the Soviets a good target, I think. The French are going to want to do that. But anyway, that all having been said, that's their two builds. They built one air force and one offensive. Next, we go to the Italians, uh, who now have their one resource... But they can consume the Rome resource at mobilization. And you know what? They might not get another chance to do so because they may collapse just under their own weight. Who knows if they'll ever get to total war? Uh, I've seen them collapse sooner than rather than later. So they are absolutely going to be building um, with the Rome limited resource this time. So that's going to be consumed. And that means they have... Uh, they're at war, by the way. So they're going to get two war offensives. One of their uh, offensive markers is in Spain right now. So Italy gets two war offensives because they consumed uh, two, they collected rather, two industrial resources. And now they got to figure out what to do with the two resources they have. Geez, building this air unit is only going to use a half a resource. That's not very efficient. Do they build up their, their navy? Is that what they try to do here? That's an interesting choice. They can't easily hit Gibraltar from here. But damn, they would like that extra air unit, I'm sure. But they're going to have to do it later. Instead, one resource is going to be turned into an offensive, and the other is going to be turned into a naval upgrade. That just That's, that's just, just the most efficient way to do this. They don't have another offensive they could take, otherwise they might take that. Okay, so that's Italy. We go now to the United States, who's sitting at rearmament with their seven resources, because the U.S.-Japan trade was pulled back a turn or two ago. So they get seven builds, and they've got quite a little bit to build, but they're going to want some offensives. They're not at war. Only uh, Britain and all the fascist powers are at war right now, which is really going to benefit them getting all those free war offensives. That's going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine war offensives for the fascists this turn. Granted, a lot of those are limited, but hey, if you're the fascists, that's you only need a couple of turns of that to win the game. Right now, they're sitting at 19 victory points, while the democracies are at 8 and the communists are at 5. So they are doing very well, but on a precarious position, as you can see. They're currently uh, fighting what amounts to a three-front war, uh, potentially here. Okay, so the United States, anyway. They got seven builds. Let's immediately turn one of those into an offensive, because I think we're going to need that this turn. What else are we going to build? Well, right now the United States does not have a lot in the European theater, so let's build a ground unit to help there. That's two. An air unit to help that. That's three, four, five. And then do we do a six, seven with one of these others? Uh, I think so. One, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven to get some kind of upgrade to a naval unit or an air unit. Let's get an upgrade to an air unit. I have a feeling everything is going to hinge on this European fight and that the democracies aren't going to care too much about Japan just yet. So they are going to pick up an air upgrade. So that's the Americans. Moving on, we now go to the Soviet Union, who is going to be collecting the Polish resource. Or do they hold on to it until they can turn it into war offensives? Well, the question is, can they hold it long enough for that to be the case? And that's a much harder choice. Ah... Uh... It looks like, I think they're going to take the risk and hold the Polish resource in Poland. Reason being, they can see that the Germans are currently at war with Britain, and that is going to be a problem, and the French are going to be knocking on their door real soon. The Germans aren't necessarily in a position to destroy the French uh, very, well, maybe they are. It's hard to say that they aren't, actually. They could do that first thing. I guess we'll have to see. Um, but the Soviet Union is going to take the risk that uh, the Germans are going to be occupied. They're going to hold on to that Polish resource. That means it's going to collect one, two, three, four resources and zero war offensives. So four resources at mobilization gives them uh, eight builds here. And I think they're going to make one of those a fortress. Because again, if you don't build them soon enough, they're not super valuable. So let's put a fortress on the turn track. That's one build. 
two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight is going to be an offensive. Uh, they don't actually have a lot of offensives, uh, but they're going to get another two when they go to total war. So that'll be three this turn. That's pretty good. And then if they need to, they can build these with the offensives later. So that's the Soviet Union. Next, we go to Japan. And Japan, as we mentioned, is going to absolutely just wreck it with these resources here. They might actually wind up not collecting some of these because there's too many. So the first thing is they're going to collect one... Uh, let's see how many um, industrial resources they're going to collect. One, two, three industrial resources. That gives them three war offensives. So we're going to pick those up first. One, two, three. Three. Okay. Now, the total resources they're collecting, one, two, three, four, they could collect upwards of six. But let's just start with the four, uh, because we'll leave these in place for now, and we'll collect them later if we need to. So one, two, plus the three, four there. So that's four times three is 12 builds they have right now. And let's see what they're going to do with those. Well, I think they're going to max out their offensives. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So of the 12 builds, we're going to use six to build these two offensives. And by that way, that's that's actually, I'm just multiplying and dividing by three in my head as we go here for total war. That's just how I treat um, offensives. It's easier to think of things in number of builds, and the offensives equal your current uh, conversion rate in terms of builds. Um, for me, it's just easier that way. Anyway, so that we got six builds left. What are we going to do? Well, we definitely want some more carrier superiority. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, we do really want these other things. But I don't think we can have both of them. Because if we collect one more resource... Oh, geez, that's a problem, isn't it? Let's take back one of these things. Let's take back the one air unit. No, let's take back the infantry unit. So now we have one build. If we collect the Jiangsu or the Hebei resource, let's say, now we have a total of four. We could do one, two, three, four. I think that's better for them. And then we'll hold on to the Jiangsu resource for next turn. That way we at least collect three resources for next turn. Um, ideally, we want to get a new resource every turn as Japan. If they can get to India this turn, that's amazing. Uh, but they need to get Java at the very least and try to get the Philippines. The Philippines is very important because the Americans having the Philippines means Tokyo is immediately in, in vulnerable. Um, so we'll see here. Let's see. That's everything for them. They've got one more resource there. Okay, so now Britain. Britain does get war resources. Actually, they don't. They don't get war offensives because they can't collect this resource because it's been damaged. Yeah, they don't collect this resource because it's been damaged. Instead, they connect the, collect the Canadian, the Indian, and the Queensland resource. The, in, the Italians, unfortunately, did not have, after capturing Malta, they, oh, you know what? Um, we didn't actually put the marker on here, did we? Where is it? Uh, it is in the markers tab. Da, 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 bases. There we go. Now the Italians have Malta like they're supposed to. Um, the They didn't get the flag they needed to get maneuvers to try to block the trade for the British through uh, the Suez Canal. So unfortunately, the British are, for, unfortunately for Italy, the British are collecting all of those. So they are collecting a total of three resources and zero war offensives. Well, that sucks, and they are going to need some air forces first and foremost. So the first thing that they're going to do, uh, and they're going to be getting two, one to two, so they get, uh, oh, you know what? Hang on a tick. The Americans are going to take one less buy here, I think. Yeah, they're going to take back the, um, that is actually two less. Okay, that's, that sucks. Uh, that means they can build a sub. Okay, so they take back one of their resource expenditures in order to send one to the British 
Absolutely. No question. They should be using their Lend-Lease for that because they can only send to powers that are belligerent. And the British are the only non-fascist powers that are belligerent. And of course, the United States would be sending them an industrial resource because the United States doesn't need its industrial resources. It's not, at, it's not at war yet. So it doesn't get any benefit from those compared to natural resources. So the British in this case do get one war offensive and a total of four resources. Good job remembering how to keep your friends safe. Okay. Now we're back. Four times two is eight. They get eight builds. One, two. Yeah, do they want to build the fortress? That's a tough call. They could put it in Denmark. That would piss them off, but not until next turn. We can't afford that right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Another air unit? Or maybe we do put the fortress on the on the turn track. And I don't know. I mean, the British are not playing for the game, uh, the long game right now. I mean, if they're at war, they should be buying a lot of offensives to try to make use of the things they have. The thing is, they just, they don't have a lot of forces and they really just have to survive this turn, get the Americans in the game. Once that happens, they can build out their force pool, which they're kind of doing here. Um, then, then they can start buying offensives. All right, so that's their play. They do have two offensives. That's not awful for a power at war, but uh, really should be higher, but they're on the defensive right now. Okay, so that's the British, and now the Germans, they are going to also go on a spending spree here. Let's see, how many are they going to collect? They're going to collect the Swedish resource, uh, or do they hold on to that until total war? It's only worth one more build, and they probably need it this turn, but let's see. They're going to collect the Benelux resource because they are at war. So that's one plus the Ruhr resource. That's one, two, plus the two base resources that they have. Those are all industrial. That's four war offensives. And I'm actually going to minimize this here. One, two, three, four war offensives. And that's four total resources. Hmm. Hmm. Germany is in a position where I think they really, really want those offensives. So they're going to burn the Swedish resource as well. So that's a total of five. One, two, three, uh, four, five. The other Ruhr resource, that's right. So they've got a total of five. They spent the Czechoslovakia resource last turn to get just an offensive because they were hoping to utilize it. And they did. They did use it, I think, to build up the Air Force and bomb London. So that was effective for that sense. So we've got five times two for the conversion rate. We've got ten builds. Well, immediately I'm going to spend two four on these offensives. So we've got six builds left. One, two, uh, let's see, three. I don't think we need to worry about the subs because the Italians are doing a damn good job in the Mediterranean. Four, five, six. I mean, I just want that extra offensive. It's going to be, it's going to be very valuable this turn. Um, in fact, hmm, just just looking at, look at this, look at how many, you can't even see how many they have here. Uh, they have almost all their offensives. I'm getting an extra infantry. Yeah, I need the extra infantry in the air to cover because Italy has to go back and cover its, its back door there. So I think that's the best play for Germany there. Okay. Now everybody gets to put their stuff in reserve. Man, this is taking longer than expected. I kept thinking, you know, oh, with me at the helm, everything will go fast. And yeah, it's kind of true, but not really. All right, the, the French are definitely getting their air force out as fast as possible. The Italians are going to put Il Duce out there. I think they're going to go to total war this turn. I think that's going to really um, be like a beneficial thing here um, for Italy. But maybe not until after their, their uh, home front comes out of the box. Or do they want this carrier flip? Like, we know that the British are going to come and try to do something sneaky. And maybe we want carrier superiority before they can do that. Yeah, we do. I think Il Duce is going to go in the cup. No, we need to use Il Duce. Because that way we get him again later. But what are we going to use him on? Nothing fantastic. Except commitment increase. We're going to use them on commitment increase, and we'll get those when they come out. Okay, that's Italy. The United States is going to put a flag because they want to get in this war. So they're going to go to mobilization as soon as possible. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter what these other ones are when they come out, but they want that as soon as possible. The Soviet Union is also going to put a flag in reserve because they are running low on flags. They want to make sure that those happen. Although, oh man, you know, I'm always a fan of a tank upgrade, especially for the Soviets in the position they're in. If they can get a second tank upgrade, but they don't have enough offensives yet, and they're going to need that flag. Yeah, let's do it. You know what? I have, in the past really kicked myself for not getting the tank upgrade into the reserve when I needed it. So that's the Soviet's choice. The Japanese have uh, an absolute ton of options here, but the logistics base is probably going to be the thing they need to get out first because they need to put it somewhere so they can have more power. The question is, are the Japanese, or is this the same situation? We want the tank upgrade. Mm, it's really difficult. Um, the tank upgrade, actually kind of late in the game here, but... Uh, it might be very helpful for holding the Philippines, getting that extra level of uh, absorption of damage, for example. So the question is, what do the Japanese want to attack first? They've got two juicy targets. They've got the Philippines and the Hawaiian Islands. Whichever one they attack could have the surprise marker if Japan, if Germany doesn't use it on, on France. Um, attacking the Philippines with a land attack would hurt them a little bit. Attacking the Hawaiian Islands with carrier and air superiority, man, that just seems like a good thing. And in order to do that, we need Hokkaido. And the Americans did not put their naval uh, upgrade in the, in the cup. So we know for a fact that we can hit Hawaii as Japan from Hokkaido. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to put the the logistics base, so that way we can put it directly in Hokkaido and then move the other carrier unit up to Hokkaido. Uh, maybe get another air unit in there, but I don't think the second air unit would help all that much. Actually, it would. It definitely would. So we're hoping that we can get a plane coming out of the production holding box. Uh, to that end, maybe we keep a little bit back. How many planes do we have in there? We have two. Yeah. This is a sneaky thing. If you want more control over something that you, like, you need two things to come out. You can put one in reserve. The other one, if it's a build, you can keep it in the force pool. And what that does is later on when you use a maneuvers or an offensive, you can build that thing in your force pool. And that seems like what Japan should be doing here. That way they have the ability to build an air unit whenever they want, and it might not get stuck at the bottom of the cup. There's so many things going into the cup this turn. You cannot rely on that. You just cannot. All right, so that was uh, the, the Japanese. Now we get the British. The British effectiveness lets them... Let's see, they're going to put out the tank upgrade. That's what they're really worried about here. If they get the tank upgrade in the London now, they don't have to worry about a German invasion of London. I mean, we see the Germans have, uh, are going to have, if they attack the North Sea first, that's air superiority right there. Boom. Um, and that, oh, but the British could respond with carrier superiority. Hmm. I think the British want their flag or, no, an air unit. An air unit so that they can help out the French and so that they can, uh, so that they can defend themselves. And then the Germans. Now, this is an interesting choice because the Germans were gearing up to attack London. But the air unit, uh, it's going to take them more than one offensive. First, they have to clear the North Sea. Then they can hit London with a second offensive. Uh, and that is actually kind of risky because air superiority is not as good as carrier superiority. And they cancel each other out, basically. So it would be two to two. That's risky. I mean, the Germans could get a... I mean, do they want to go to total war this turn? I think that's, of any of the powers, that's something that Germany might be able to do. Japan is going to have to use every flag they get from now on on stability, just in case. Now that they're at total war. I think the Germans are going to take their land upgrade, their tank upgrade, and put that in reserve. Because we know the British didn't do it. So if we, it gives us the option to attack London with armor superiority in the near future. And then we'll just be at the whim of the cup, I guess. When things come out, they come out. So there it is. That's our production step 
all the way through to the end. The final disposition step is done. We go to the action phase. The Germans, of course, interrupt, send it to the force pool, and flip over their tank army. you got to keep the tank armies together. You don't want them to get separated, if at all possible. Uh, the British interrupt, and they send their uh, air unit to London, where it can guard both Paris and... Actually, yeah, it gets constructed there, but they can't help Paris until they get an alliance with the French. The French are on their own for a little bit, uh, which is too bad for... Uh, for them. That's one of the reasons that Germany doesn't want... I mean, they could hit Paris right now and do a lot of damage, but A, their stability is at, th at, at all the way at steady so that they're not going to collapse right away regardless, even if we... Well, maybe if we get a triumph and they miss all their roles. But it's not a good guarantee the way that it sometimes is when they're unwavering or unstable. Um, secondly, we don't want to waste our... Uh, surprise attack against France. France is going to fall. We want to use that against the Americans and try to get a triumph over there. Japan needs them to get crippled this turn. As we can see, the Americans aren't putting much into this theater. Uh, they might in this turn, but we'll see. So the British to the Jap Germans or Japanese are going to interrupt and they're going to put their base in Hokkaido, which means we can now move units to there as needed. The Soviets will interrupt and do their thing. Uh, they're going to upgrade that tank army there. The Americans then, of course, interrupt and they are going to use this flag to increase their commitment to mobilization. That will increase their effectiveness for the rest of the game. Here they go. Four, oh, hang on, we got to see the map here. Sorry about that, guys. Fix. Um, so, uh, and i got to make sure that you can see, yes, you can see the, the numbers coming now properly. Um, okay, so 4-6 is a success for the Americans. Uh, and just so we see the British put their air unit here, the Germans flipped this unit there, and the Soviets flipped that unit there. Okay, so um, <laughs> so that was the Americans increasing their commitment. That is a provocation against Japan. Japan gets a flag. They're going to put that directly into reserve that they can use for their propaganda test here in a minute. The Americans get to add six new things to their force pool, and they get, uh, they get uh, commitment offensives. They get four commitment offensives, because even though they gave away one of their units during Lend-Lease, that Lend-Lease, per the designer, is only in effect during the production step. It does not apply during the rest of the turn. The same is true for uh, the Japan resource in Tokyo. If uh, the Japanese have that resource in Tokyo uh, and they they do not get commitment increases from that resource, but they do get war offensives with it because it is an industrial resource. In this case, the Americans gave away their industrial resource during the production phase or in the Lend-Lease, but they get it back during the regular part of the turn. So they get four offensives. Oh, you know what? We never put anything in the cup. <laughs> we should do that, huh? One, two, three. Somebody out there screaming. Why you didn't put anything in the cup? All right. Everything oh, except the Italians. There we go. Everybody's in the cup now. But we didn't pull from the cup, so that's all well and good. Okay. So the Americans got those offensives. And in fact, are they going to put one in reserve? I don't think they want an offensive in reserve. They want flags before those offensives come out. They can't do anything with the offensives right now. They have to be able to declare war first. So... Um, that's that. Uh, although now I feel bad that the French uh, are going to probably get left out of this. They put their air unit down for defense, but they can't uh, get up to mobilization, which means uh, if the Americans try to declare war with their flag, the French have to break that alliance. That's bad for the Allies. They're going to need those. Anyway, so that was the Americans increasing their commitment, and they have to pick a few from the countermix here. They get to pick six. Six things. Well, we're definitely going to pick one air, one infantry, uh, one logistics base, and then what do they have? They have an armor upgrade in the cup. Let's put one more into there. That's one, two, three, four, uh, maybe a fleet. That's five. Submarine for six? That could be valuable. Let's find out. Let's find out how that works. Okay. Or, you know what? No sub. No sub. Send a countermix. We're going to get an extra land unit. There we go. They need one more army. If they're going to fight in Europe and in Pacific, they're going to need that extra army. Okay. So that's the Americans' commitment increase. The Japanese are immediately going to interrupt to increase their 
uh, stability. Here's a propaganda roll. 2d6 is a failure. So Japan puts a cube in the propaganda box. And we go on to, let's see, Il Duce can't interrupt. So the French absolutely are going to interrupt. And they're going to put that air unit in Provence. <gasps> what are they doing there? How provocative. Italy is very concerned. Italy's going to use Il Duce. And... Now he's really, Italy's in trouble here. They have to consider pulling at least one unit back to Italy proper because if the French get an offensive, oh, they can't. They're not at mobilization yet. They have to wait for their flag. Oh, but that's still, they could get a flag and an offensive out of that cup before Italy gets its home front marker. Italy's going to wait. They're going to hold off on spending Il Duce. Il Duce. Here we go. A crisis. The first crisis. A wartime crisis. 2d6 is a 5-4. Political crisis. Five-year plan. If the Soviet Union has a counter reserve, return it to its force pool or available markers box. No effect because there is no uh, unit in the Soviet reserve. Next up, an American air unit. <sighs> Could they put it in Java? They could, and that would help cover the Philippines. There's no reason not to do that at this point. Um, they can have one of each in Java because it's restricted. And they have one of each in the Philippines already, so they can't add another one there, thanks to the restricted nature of the zone. Yeah, that seems like the best place to put it for now. We'll start deploying things to this theater as soon as we can get actual landings over here. Next out of the cup, a German offensive. Ha! Huh. This is where Germany has to have some tough decisions, right? Attacking in the North Sea would only give them a plus one, and they wouldn't even necessarily get air superiority because of that air unit now that's in London, but a plus one on both those rolls has a decent chance of doing something. They don't want to fight the French if they don't have to. Maybe they put it in reserve. Ideally, they can go to total war this turn and then get plus two augmentations into the North Sea with all of these, effect all of these uh, offensives. They can knock out London... And, and Scotland, that would be pretty effectively knocking out the British. Hmm. Yeah, they're going to put it in reserve. Just hold on to it. They can also build things with it. It didn't occur to me until now, but do they want to build things with it? They could try bombing London again. No, we want to wait and hopefully get to that total war thing. It looks like the Axis are trying for a knockout blow here. Hey, there's the German flag we were waiting for. Let's spend it. Oh, but going to total war means our effectiveness drops. Oh, God, this is terribly scary for Germany. <clears throat> no. No, it's too dangerous. We're going to spend this flag on a pressure roll for Japan, which is successful. Japan gains a flag. Germany just doesn't want to start getting those minus twos to their to their rolls yet. It's too early. Even though it would get those nice increased augmentations, it's just not worth it. Okay, next on... Oh, God, it's a German offensive. Okay. Well, with little choice. But now we can at least guarantee that if we're successful in clearing the North Sea, we will, uh, we will be able to do well in the coming invasion. So, Germany's declaring a naval attack on the North Sea. They're going to move their fleet out like this. And now for support, they're going to call in the air unit. And then the British, we're going to call in their own air unit and the carrier unit here. So now we have a situation where we have to resolve air combat. The Germans are augmenting this with a plus one. So they are 2d6 plus one against 2d6 for the Brits. 2d6 plus one is a seven and a four. Seven to four will force the British to retreat rather than take a loss. So Germans have now gained air superiority. It's now two dice to two dice. Air superiority and carrier superiority cancel each other out. So two dice to two dice means, uh, sorry, the Germans still have a plus one to their die roll. Here we go. Two dice plus one. That's a seven. Two dice plus one. Oh, sorry, two dice. Seven to six means that the British have to take a loss or retreat. If they retreat, they know what's coming. They know an invasion is imminent. So I think the British are just going to stall. They're going to take the loss on their carrier, and that's the end of the battle. During aftermath, the Germans have to retreat because they are the aggressor in this case. And the British have to retreat one, car one fleet out of the area because... Um, you can only keep one during occupation limits, adjacent areas without a base. Okay, 
I think that was the right play for the British. They bought themselves some time. Uh, the Germans did achieve one thing. They got rid of that one carrier the Brits have. So now they don't have the ability to build up another carrier. That's it. They could get one during total war, but they don't have a carrier upgrade, I don't think. So that's something we go to the cup. None of these guys can interrupt. And the cup is a Japanese carrier up, uh, fleet upgrade. Uh, let's do the one in the East China Sea that will make uh, a little bit stronger here. That's good. And we'll send that to the force pool. Next out of the cup is an Italian carrier upgrade. Hell yeah, it is. What are they going to do? Where are they going to go with it? I think we want the unit in Rome to get the upgrade. Then it can go and sit in the Tyranian Sea. No, we want the... This Malton fleet can support combat in anywhere around it. That's the fleet we want. We would like this fleet to come out here and block future attacks... Uh, sorry, constant... Uh, lines of communication through the Mediterranean. That's the ideal situation. The, the British still have a fleet over in Gibraltar, and we can't get to it easily. We can get to it in an extended range if we wanted to attack it. It's like one, two, three. Uh, but that would be a minus one to our attack, and that's not great. All right, so that's the Italian play. That goes to the force pool. Next out of the cup is a Japanese offensive. So this is an interesting choice. I think the Japanese are going to spend one of these three on a build. Crap, we didn't use the... Oh, this, everything backfired. This was the turn I was going to put the air unit into, uh, in, into, into reserve so that I could build it when I wanted it. Well, we have three. One of them can be a build and the, uh, and one of them can be a deploy and the other one could be to build this air unit. I, it sucks. It's going into the cup, but I think we got to use it efficiently. Yeah, so the one was the thing, then they're going to use another one. Uh, no, I think they have a better plan here. This offensive is going to be used for a carrier upgrade, which goes in the cup, one, two, plus a deploy. The deploy allows them to move this carrier into Hokkaido now that it can support it. And yeah, that's pretty much all it does. Which is disappointing, but I needed that in there in order for the next chain of events to happen. Uh, so, that is what it is. I would have liked to attack Hubei, but I have not enough air units to do it. Okay, so we built the carrier upgrade, and we did a deploy. This unit is, this, this uh, offensive is done. They're going to send it to the available box. Now, let's just not get any more fascist stuff out of the cup. The J Japan just wants to spend its flag. All right, the Americans have a unit they can build and send somewhere. They can't put it anywhere outside of American territory at the moment. But they could put it in New Guinea. But I feel like we should save one to send over to France just in case. So we're going to put it in California. That gives us the option to send it to either the European or Pacific theaters without a delay box. Okay. Next out of the cup. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold off. The uh, Japanese are absolutely interrupting with their flag. And they're going to attempt propaganda again because they need their reserve open. As we saw, not having their reserve just screwed them on that <clears throat> with their pants on. Okay, so this is a 2d6 plus 1 to the roll is a success. They get their stability back up to steady. So they're no longer in danger of collapsing uh, during an upcoming home front check. And now we move go to the cup for real. There, oh boy, just in time. <clears throat> now we get the home front check for the Japanese. 2d6 minus 2 for total war is a 1. So they lose one level of stability because they weren't at 0 or less. Uh, and now they get their free Goram deployment. That was just bad timing on their part. Oh no. <sighs> they don't want to deploy anything. They have everything where they want it now. That's, that's too bad. Japan got screwed on that one. Okay. Next uh, out of the cup is a German offensive. Are they going to keep trying for this North Sea attack? I think, yeah, everything has been focused on finishing off the British before the French can get involved. So they're going to declare another naval attack on the North Sea, and they're going to commit these guys in support, and we're going to get a plus one in augmentation of this. We're going to get support from the British units as well. Here we go. It's this time 2d6 plus one against 2d6, same as last time for the air. Here's the Germans. That's a six. And a five. That forces the British air out. All right. And now 
we have an advantage for the Germans. 3d6 plus 1 versus 2d6, because the carrier's gone. 3d6 plus 1, that's a 7 and a 6. Wow, the Germans keep winning, but just barely each time. Do the French, or do the British do the same thing and just play for time? Yeah, I think they do. I really think they do. Oh, and you know what? Crap. I'm so used to the French and the British always being allied and uh, not and at war with Germany together. But this has been a provocation against the French and the Americans each time. So the Americans get one for last operation, one for this operation, and the French get one for each as well because it's taking place in the French interest, which is the same as the American interest. See that? Um... These are the only operations that have taken place so far. We had a deployment and construction, but that's it. Okay. So, uh, do the British take the loss and hold the sea zone? I think, God, that's really expensive, but that is what's defending them right now. Yeah. Ugh. They'll do it. I mean, the Germans only have so many offensives this turn. They have a lot, but if they have to expend four of them invading the British Isles... That's a huge amount of resources for them to do. And the Germans are pissed, by the way. They're, they're already upset about this. But okay. The Americans will immediately interrupt. And what are they going to do? They're going to attempt to pressure the French? No, they're going to let... They're not going to interrupt. They want the French to get to mobilization before they join the war. So they're going to pass. And the Italians are going to pass. And the French are going to attempt to increase their commitment level. 1d6 is a failure. France gets a propaganda box and their flag goes away. All right. Nobody else is going to interrupt, so we get an American offensive. Well, the Americans are kicking themselves now. They can try to build something. No, they can't. They're not at war. Damn. And at this time, it's worth two military actions. Dum, 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 dum. Honestly, they have to throw it away or throw away the flag, and they need the flag, so we're going to send that to available. I think the Americans are going to immediately interrupt with this flag and maybe pressure the French. They want the French to join. They need them to. Because that way they have a place to land over here. Right now, it's not useful. So yeah, they're going to use their flag to pressure the French. And they're at effectiveness 3 now. We didn't upgrade that earlier. So that is 3d6 is a failure on the pressure roll. Ugh. I guess they're getting screwed by the dice as well. The Soviets are the only ones that haven't been screwed by luck so far. The Germans are still going to bide their time with this offensive. Next, we've got the French flag. They are going to attempt to increase their commitment again. One, die, go. Oh, a big fail. Goose egg, no commitment. In I'm sorry, that wasn't propaganda. I had these in the wrong box. There we go. Commitment increase. Uh... Jesus. Okay. Next out of the cup. Again, Italy's hoping to... Italy's going to jump in with Il Duce. The instant... You know what? They're going to do it now. They gotta. They're at war. They could spend him on a maneuvers. I mean, they could... They really need to get something in Lombardy. They really need it. They need it not to be a cakewalk. At the same time... They don't need to defend Czechoslovakia as much. Okay, here we're going to attempt maneuvers for Ilduce. Here we go. Send to available. 2d6 is a success. One military action is going to be used to build this air unit. They'll put it in reserve. The other military action is going to be a deployment where they bring back an infantry and an air unit to Italy. Um, I would like to put them down in Libya and try to take over Egypt and force our way through... But we got to also be wary of these Soviets. They could try to come in and, and gut check the Germans from behind. I've seen it happen. And if they do that, all bets are off. Uh, Germany could fall fairly easily at that point if their forces are tied up against the Brits. That's kind of why they're not acting yet on this. We got to see what happens. Next out of the cup is a crisis. The second crisis is a 4-1. That is political crisis, congressional investigation. If the United States has a counter reserve, uh, it goes back to its force pool or available box. It does not. No effect. Next, the, it, uh, the Soviets get another infantry unit. Where would they put that? 
Uh, we've got in Romania. I guess we could start building up a force in the Caucasus to inv invade uh, Persia and get some nice resources down there. Or do we want to build up the force in Romania and push into Hungary? That might be an easy place to get more victory points, and it keeps us strong in Central Europe here. We don't need to get a unit wasted over there. Okay, after that, the Italians are going to interrupt, and they're going to send an air unit up to Czechoslovakia to aid Silesia or Czechoslovakia, whichever one is attacked. Okay, next out of the cup is the American home front. They are now at mobilization, so they must take this at a minus one. 3d6 minus one is a five. They're good. And they may now deploy freely. They still can't deploy to Europe except to go to Portugal. And how the hell useful is that? <sighs> what do they want to do differently here? They can see Hokkaido's getting built up for an attack on the Hawaiian Islands, but there's not much more they can put there. They could abandon Hawaii, but then they lose Pearl Harbor. They lose connection to the rest of the world. You can't lose Pearl Harbor. So they got to leave it just the way that it is. Okay, next out of the cup. A Japanese flag. Well, they got their stability up and it went right back down. And we, always, we talked about earlier, they have to get that stability up. But at the same time, they really need this air unit to come out. So they're going to spend the flag on maneuvers. <sighs> Cross your fingers. This is a dangerous one. Oh, it's a big fail. Huge fail. Wouldn't have mattered if they went for propaganda, except they'd have a cube in a different place. Oh, boy. Okay, next out of the cup is a Soviet flag. They are going to attempt to use this to put in reserve. They want to increase to their commitment, but only after the home front marker comes through. Next out of the cup, the British home front. That is at a minus one, but they are at effectiveness of three. 3d6 minus one is a failure. The British lose a level of stability, and it looks like the German strategy is going to pay off here if they can hit them a little bit more. So the British now have the option to move things around. They're absolutely calling this air unit back from Egypt and putting it in London. Uh, that is the only place that makes sense to put it at the moment, so they are done. The next out of the cup is a Japanese offensive. Damn it, that came out sooner than they wanted. The only thing they can build is an air unit. Whew. Okay. I think this is it. I think they have to attack the Hawaiian Islands with a surprise attack. They wanted to get the extra air unit out. They delayed because of that. It didn't work out. They can't delay any longer. Here we go. So, let's put out the appropriate markers for this. Surprise attack. And uh, this is also a double augmented attack for them. So this is at extended range, and it's actually augmented plus two. So it's extended range, plus one area, and uh, plus two augmentation. So that's a total of plus two, minus one, and the defender also has a minus one. So the units in question that are actually doing this are these naval units here. One, two, three. That's what makes it extended range. One, two, three three and strategic air units also have a range of two so they can go one two three and get here with extended range so first we have to fight an air battle and i've got a net of plus one the american defenders have a net of minus one here we go 2d6 plus one for the japanese is a seven 2d6 minus one for the americans is a one huge 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 upset the the planes are blasted to pieces on the runway can you say torah 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 massive i mean why did we even need that other plane it couldn't have even made it i'm an idiot it didn't even have the range to make it because it wouldn't have been upgraded in time it was a delay for no reason. That was glorious. Absolutely phenomenal. Next, this is even worse here. Okay. 3d6 plus 1 versus 1d6 minus 1. This is going to be absolutely disastrous, I think, for the Americans. Here we go. Oh, that's only a 5. All right. And 1d6 minus 1 is a 1. 5 to 1. Huge triumph. Even better than historical Pearl Harbor. That was phenomenal. One, two, three with two left over. Oh, man. Oh, absolutely devastating. 
and the surprise marker now gets flipped over and put on the democracy side uh, so that uh, we know they can no longer be surprised. They no longer have the minus one, but that paid off beautifully. Actually, the dice rolls didn't really matter so much with the minus one, but it gave me the confidence to do it. And by the way, that was, of course, a base attack. There's no reason to do a naval attack on an area with a base and not have it be a base attack. There's no disadvantage. Uh, so that means the Japanese have just captured Hawaii with this attack. Where's the rising sun? There. That is huge. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, and that is a triumph for the Japanese. They gain a flag, which they did desperately need since they did a stupid maneuvers check that failed. Um, and then uh, that was a disaster for the Americans. So they roll 3d6, a stability test, and they're okay. Whew. So now the only real question is, do the Japanese leave all their forces here in Hawaii? Oh, this goes away, by the way. That goes back to force pool. In order to defend it, or do they bring something back? I mean, there's no naval units over there in the Philippines. They don't need these guys here. So I think we leave everything here in Hawaii. Just leave it out on the table. And we'll build up more forces over here to attack the Philippines. We've got two fleets over here. One, This one's going to get upgraded this turn, probably. And we're going to get the other air units coming out. So, yeah, that was incredibly effective. More so even than history would suggest. Uh, okay, so that is done. Send to available. That was, by the way, a uh, surprise attack, which means the Americans and all their allies have joined the war, and they get flags as a result. The Americans are now in the war, the French are now in the war, and they get flags. So a good thing Italy did pull its stuff back there, uh, and now we have to adjust here the French are also involved, and so are the Americans. All the allies versus all the fascists now um, and the British uh, can now get an alliance back with the Americans and the French now that they're all at war. That is legal because it's a defensive war. France can join. Normally, France would not be able to join if they were the if, if uh, America was the aggressing power. France could not join because they are not yet at mobilization. But in a defensive war, because America's defending from the Japanese, the French get to join in even though they're not at mobilization. So that's very beneficial for them. But of course, it was disastrous for the Americans. Huge, huge disaster. So what next? The Americans or the Japanese just went. So the Americans are first to interrupt and do something about this. Uh, and what do they do with it? Pressure is what's on their cube. But right now, they don't have anybody to pressure except they can pre pressure Britain because Britain's got a stability problem. They've only got one flag in the cup. So the Americans are going to spend their flag to pressure the British with three dice. That is a success. The British gain a flag. They're going to put it right in reserve. They can use it more than the Americans can. Um especially because they could use it to join the alliance again, and then the Americans could land in the United Kingdom. They could also land in France at this point. Uh, that's what the American unit here was going to do, but I think they've got a bigger problem in the Pacific they have to solve first, because we haven't really uh, noticed, uh, not noted it, but look, all of these guys down here are out of supply. They're in limited supply, rather, because you can no longer draw supplies through the Hawaiian Islands area, and you can't you know, draw supplies to sea areas unless they're within two areas of a port so that the uh, the Japanese can now go wild attacking all the British things over here and taking them all for free and then attack the Philippines and it's got a minus one there perpetually until the, the, the base at Pearl Harbor is taken back. Okay, uh, so the Americans did that pressure, so now the Japanese or the Germans could interrupt. The Germans now have a much more limited timetable with the Americans in the war. They also see that the, the British have a chance of uh, gaining some stability back. Do they jump in and start this thing here? They are also at war with the French. So, like, do they take this opportunity to knock out the French before the French can attack or do anything about it, before the Americans can reinforce? I think they have to. I think that's first on the table. So here is the reserve for the, for the Germans. Um, they're going to use... An augmented attack from Benelux into Paris. So both of the German armor are coming in and the air. The Amer the British are not allied with the French yet, so only the French air can come in and defend. So here's 2d6 plus 1 for the Germans. Oh, it's only a 3. 2d6 for the French. Ew, no! 
Wow! That's a huge upset. The French Air Force puts up a tenacious defense. The Germans flip over, taking one loss, and then retreat to absorb the second loss. That was absolutely horrible. Now the Germans have to deal with a uh, extra die being rolled for the for the French. So they're going to roll 3d6 plus 1 for the fortress, but they're going to roll minus 1 die thanks to the uh, the armor superiority of the Germans. So it's 2d6 plus 1 versus 2d6 plus 1. Anybody's game, Germany goes first. 6 is a 7. And 6 is a 7! It's a tie. The Germans have to lose a tank. The French will, of course, choose to lose an infantry. I believe they have that option. Yes, there's no prohibition against losing the uh, the fortress the same way. So the French lose the army, and because the fortress is still here, the Germans are forced back to Benelux. Well, didn't go quite as well as they'd planned. They lost that tank army. That's a two-for-one loss, and they flipped their air unit. That was really bad for them. The dice went against them there, and now the British are going to interrupt to attempt to get in, get in on the alliance between the Americans and the French. So they're going to spend their flag, or are they going to increase their stability? They're at mobilization. They can't afford to spend flags uh, on that when they're not at steady. So they're going to spend that flag to increase their stability. Here we go. Propaganda roll is a success, so the British are back. They'll, they, they still have an, another flag in the cup. They'll use it. Uh, for that um, later. So, now that they've gone, the Japanese can go, and they're going to do a propaganda roll as well. They don't need the maneuvers as much anymore, and they do need the propaganda. Here we go. 2d6 is a success. They get themselves back out of the danger zone. Okay, the Soviets are still waiting for their home front to pass, but the French are definitely going to want to do something. They could use that uh, flag for a to um, uh, commitment increase, um, but their home front hasn't come by yet. I think they're going to use this flag for a maneuver check, see if they can build something now they're at war. It's a failure. Oh, but they give up their increased commitment cube. Oh, but I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. I think they'd rather, because they're at war... They don't want, because the whole point of increasing their commitment to mobilization earlier was so that they could declare war on the Germans if they invaded London and, and invade Germany proper. But now that they're at war, they got to be real careful about their stability. That's what kills them. So they are going to try to get units back out and defend Paris rather than uh, try to increase their commitment, which puts their stability in a danger zone. Okay. So they did that. Again, the Soviets are waiting. We go back to the cup. A French offensive. Well, they can build stuff with this, although not nearly as much, thanks to the one-to-one -one ratio. So do they spend this to build one thing, or do they use it some other way? Uh, the, fly the plane, by the way, is flying back to Provence. Just gives them more options overall, since the British seem to have London covered. Um, they're going to use it to build an infantry unit. The one that they lost is now going into reserve. The Germans have a limited timetable to hit Paris again before that pops back out. But it's an American flag that comes out of the cup. The Americans are already at mobilization. They don't have a need for this flag. Their home front's already passed. They succeeded. So they're going to do a maneuvers and try to get some builds out since they lost so much at, at Pearl Harbor. Here is no, no builds for them. So they just get uh, another Cuban maneuvers. Next out of the cup, because the French can't interrupt, is an American offensive. That could get them some builds, uh, and they're going to use that immediately. Yeah, no question. Uh, they get two builds. They're immediately putting a fleet on the turn track so that it can come out next turn. Done. Next is the British, or the French home front. Okay, well, they were waiting on that. Here's uh, 1d6 plus 0. A, they passed it. Very good for the French. No need to move things around. I think they're good where they are. And uh, next we go to the cup again, and it's a crisis. The third crisis of the turn that puts us into sudden death, though I would bet there's a ton of stuff left in here. There is an absolute ton of stuff left in here. So the crisis itself is a 6-2 communist coup. The Soviet Union must perform a diplomacy attempt against an ungarrisoned country of its choice, regardless of interest. If it fails and the country is uncontrolled, the diplomatic opportunity occurs with only non-communist powers eligible. Well, here's the problem. If they do it any where it's at a minus one thanks to the fact that they're not at collective security so they're going to do it someplace that is not uncontrolled right they could either do it in a controlled country so that there's no disadvantage if they fail 
And I think it's going to be Sweden, because that way, if they fail, nothing bad happens. If they succeed, they take away a victory point from the Germans. Um, they could also do Bulgaria, but that gives the opportunity for somebody else to pick up the point. So here's Sweden, 2d6, looking for sixes only on this diplomacy check, and it's a fail. So Germany keeps Sweden under control. So the communist coup in Sweden did not go anywhere. All right. Because that was a crisis, the French are now allowed to build up their unit. They interrupt to do it. And next out of the cup is a British flag. The British need to get back in this alliance. And since they got their stability up, now they will try to do so. Two, 3d6 for the alliance role for the British to get in. And they are successful. Now, all the allies are friendly with each other. All the fascists are friendly with each other. And it's just an all-out war while the communists watch on with glee. The French get an offensive next out of the cup, and I think they might hold that in reserve rather than waste it on a build when they're not at a higher level of mobilization. They're going to increase commitment next chance they get since their home front went by. Next out of the cup is a British air unit. It doesn't actually have any place to put it right now, except they could put it in France because they are now allied. Boom. Done. Next out of the cup, Japan gets an offensive. Again, the fascists are having some hard times in Europe, but Japan is just going to town on the Americans here. So, what they need with this is, ah, oh, you know what, I guess they could take Indochina. I mean, that doesn't sound as sexy as, like, invading the Philippines, but when needs must, right? And at this point, they really need an air unit back in Guangdong uh, that'll help them invade the Philippines, or, you know, st 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 stuck out in the East China Sea that can support. Uh, so, yeah, we don't want to attack the Philippines until we get air support. So we got three military actions. One of them is going to be building this air unit into reserve. The other one is going to be a base capture operation against the South China Sea. It just goes one, two. Hainan is undefended, so it is captured automatically. So let's pull out a Hainan uh, Japanese base right there. Boom. And then the last one is going to be an attack on an undefended Indochina. So let's send these guys in oh, it's only one only one can actually go in there unfortunately we don't have any air units so it's two versus one so here's the roll 2d6 that's a six for the japanese and one for the defending french and that's a big failure that is then a conquest of a french colony i don't think it gives a flag though no because it doesn't contain a resource it doesn't give a flag nor does it uh, cause a stability test. But the thing it does do is count as a minus one against the French and a plus one for the Japanese. So the Japanese gain a victory point and the French actually lose a victory point. So that is now a, another point for the fascists and a point down for the democracies. Now, do they retreat back to Guangdong? Huh. That's a tough call. I would like for Guangdong to have two armies for the invasion of the Philippines. So yeah, I think they have to. That's too bad. We're going to leave the fleet here in the South China Sea. That gives us the opportunity to invade Java as well if we wanted to. Options are good. So that is the uh, Japanese offensive. They built the air unit. They did the uh, invasion of um, and capture of Hainan, and they did the capture of Indochina, none of which provoked anybody because they're at war with everybody over here. The Ch Soviet Union's just like, come on, do something over here, provoke me, provoke me. All right, next out of the cup, uh, yeah, the French are holding on to there, so the next out of the cup is an American armor. Well, they can see the writing on the wall, they are going to upgrade the Philippines, absolutely. That is going to piss off the, the Japanese. It's going to be harder to take the Philippines, but not impossible. There's no armor superiority there. It's just an extra step. So, that's done. Now we get another German offensive. Do we hit Paris again? We're still going to have armor superiority. They have one flag left in the cup. Farg. They need more than that one flag. They really want to hit total war so they can get better augmentations here. But they don't want to do it until that home front is passed. That will absolutely destroy you if you do it too early. But what are the odds the French roll so well again? Huh? What are the odds? They're a little too good, actually. Here's what they're going to do. They're going to use this on builds. Sending this to available, and we're going to build the air unit back up, I think. Um... We're going to build the air unit back up, 
Uh, that way we have a better chance of surviving. Oh, no. I don't know that that's the best play. Getting a second air unit would be better, but then what do we build with the second option? <sighs> no guts, no glory. I think that's the end here. The Germans are going to spend this to go right into Paris. Got to do it. Got to try. Got to try. All right. So the Germans are going into Paris with both of their things. They're going to have armor superiority, but can they get air superiority? They're augmenting with a plus one. And let's see, the British have an air unit in there, and the French will bring in their air unit too. And then we roll. 2d6 plus one versus 2d6. That's a five versus a four. That is a success. And... The French are going to take one in the teeth to preserve air parity. So now it's one to one. You can see how having that extra air unit would have been better for the Germans here because then they could have gotten air superiority. But we now have a situation that's better than last time. The French do not have air superiority. Instead, uh, the Germans have armor superiority. So the Germans are rolling two dice plus one. The defending French are rolling one die plus one. Here we go. That's a seven. And that's a three. That is two losses. The French cannot retreat to avoid taking the... Oh, that, uh, they can retreat, actually, can't they? Two losses is enough if they retreat. So, it's not a, it's not a triumph. Uh, so, they will send the fortress the force pool, since, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's going to die regardless. Uh, that's one loss, and then they absorb the next loss by retreating to Provence, I guess. Yeah. Um, the French fleet will have to go somewhere else. It'll go to Brittany. It'll rebase to Brittany. Um, and then the British air will rebase down here. Thankfully, they can do that because they're allied now. All right. Now, that was not a triumph, but it does give Germany uh, two cubes in Paris, which gives them two flags, one of which goes in reserve. The other one will go in the cup and causes two stability tests for the French. Here's the first one. A fail. Here's the second one. A fail. They are now teetering on the brink of collapse. And the Germans are going to leave both of their, uh, all of their units in Paris. Benelux army is defending Benelux. The air unit can go and help defend Benelux if the, if the British get cute. We've also got a unit in the Ruhr that's there. Um, so Germany desperately needs more air units. I know they have a couple in the cup. So that worked out very well for Germany. They get two more points and uh, France loses two points, so they are at minus three now. Very bad for them. What comes next? The French offensive. I think the French offensive has to get used. They know if they wait too long, it's just going to be useless. So they could use this to what? Attempt to take back Paris? Ooh. Not a lot of good op odds there. Uh, they could attack Italy. Also not good odds, because they don't have any augmentations. But if they don't use it, and they lose, like, Lorraine, they could die. So I think they got to use it somewhere. Where? What are the better odds? If they go after Lombardy, then they are going in with two infantry and an heir. The heir would be even, and then the defending Italians would get a plus one. And the goal there would basically be, but if they capture that, then they lose it. So it's not... Great. The only benefit to taking Lombardy would be you get a tiny piece of, uh, you know, Italy has a chance of losing their stability. I think they have to use this offensive. Yep, they're going to use it. They're going to use it to attack Paris. It's a bold move, a bold strategy, a counterattack against these damned Germans. Uh, but you got to do what you got to do. I mean, they could also use it to attack, like, the fleet here. But how is that useful? It's not very useful. All right. So, this is bad odds for them, but maybe they'll get lucky. They're bringing in air support from the British. So, 2d6 versus 2d6. Here is the French, well, the British Air Force. It's a 6 versus the German Air Force, which is a 6! Everybody loses! But for the French, that's actually a victory. As they now have air superiority. So, plus 1 die, minus 1 die. It's now 2d6 versus 2d6. France! Oh! Oh no! Germany! Oh no! The counterattack, despite fabulous British air power destroying the Luftwaffe, is absolutely devastated. Goodbye 
Goodbye. Those armies surrounded and surrendered. And that is a triumph for Germany, another flag, and a disaster for the French. Here's their stability test, and they pass it. Somehow, they get on the radio and convince the French people that there's still hope. Despite this disaster, despite the fact they have only fleets left. Wow. Okay. The British Air Force is going to fall back to London so that it doesn't get caught in uh, Provence when France surrenders here. The Germans could use this flag to do something, and I think they're going to use it to try to do a knockout blow against the French here and capture Provence. Let's see if they can. Maneuver check. Send to available 3D6. It's successful. They attack Provence. Why Provence? Because even though they could force uh, a, a surrender in Lorraine as well, if they miss the diplomatic role on Provence, it's going to be very sad times for them. They want that resource. So they're going to try to make sure they get Provence. This is a slightly dangerous thing here, but the Italian, because they're allied with the Germans, can come in and support. So we've got 3d6 versus 1d6 plus 1 here. Oh, uh, yeah, this is... This is wow, that's okay. That's an 8. <laughs> and that's a 3. Huge success. The French... Uh, fleet here is going to rebase somewhere that it can. I guess it can go straight to North Africa. The Germans get another cube. That gives them another point. And as you can see, this is looking like an absolute bang-up job for the fascists being so far ahead in victory points. But let me remind you, that always happens in the middle of the game. They don't always win. It's balanced to the point where they get quickly run over on all sides later in the, in the game if the other teams do their jobs correctly. So, France. Down. For the count, question mark? I don't know. They have to suffer a stability test. Here it is. They're gone. Game over. Collapse time. But do they collapse or do they surrender? We now go through the collapse procedure. And the first thing is we determine the surrender threshold. Well, there are four cubes on French areas, including the one over here in Indochina. That Japan uh, doing that helped a little bit because the, the surrender limit is going to be a little higher. And their victory point total is less than is zero or less, is correct. <clears throat> so that's a total of five or less. We roll one die and a five or less France surrenders. They stay in the game, defying the Germans all the way to the end. Instead, they collapse. Let's see what this does. Each enemy power gains a flag. Germany gets the flag back that they just lost. Stability tests pending are canceled. Set power stability to wavering. Done. If powers commitment and mobilization or total war set it to exhaustion, yes, they are not at mobilization or total war. The French can come back from this because they're only at rearmament. They can uh, they can rejoin the war potentially if the Germans don't finish them off. Um, okay, then uh, return powers reserved to its status card. There isn't any. Remove all of the powers cubes from the failed political action boxes. Yeah, they lose their maneuvers cube. Okay. Perform effectiveness checks for each area containing a powers cube. They don't have any cubes anywhere anymore. They already lost them all. Their allies must immediately con conduct stability tests, then break the alliance. So the French are out of the alliance, and the British and the Americans must now suffer a test. Here's the Americans. 3d6 is actually enough to weaken them. And the British at 3d6 is going to hold strong. All right. Next up. Uh, the power must offer an armistice to all enemy powers. Each enemy power in increasing effectiveness order decides to accept the armistice or not. Does Germany want to accept France in this humbled, humiliated state? Huh. I mean, if they don't, they only need two more attacks to take Brittany and Lorraine, and then they've gotten it uh, anyway. And they'd really, really rather not have them come back later and build more units next turn. Although they can't build any units because they lost their home areas. Yeah, right now, they can't build units. Um, and they, But they can get allied with the Americans and the British again. And if they do, they can join the war because they can increase the mobilization and then get the alliance. And then Brittany is a landing zone for the allies. No, they can't do it. And the only, there's no reason to uh, to accept the armistice if you're just going to surprise attack them later. It gives them free flags. So we're going to say no. We're not going to offer. We're not going to accept the armistice uh, for for the uh, for the axis. So that having been done, we now move on. <clears throat> there's nothing anybody wants to do here because the uh, nobody can right now. That was a German move. 
the Soviets are still waiting for their uh, front home front. And there's the Italian home front instead. The Italians are steady, but they're at mobilization. So 1d6 minus 1. They need a 6 to survive. They did not. not Well, not to survive, but they lost its stability because they couldn't get the 6. Now they can freely move their units around. They are absolutely going to put this guy out into the Mediterranean Sea, which now blocks trade all the way through uh, the Mediterranean. What do they want to do? Oh, the air unit came back in Lombardy. Now that they don't have Provence as a worrying position anymore, they might go and put these units down in Libya. They could take Egypt and uh, cut them off that way too. Or they put this back up in Czechoslovakia as a further barrier against the Soviets who are looking... Very concerning at the moment. Do we want the Italians up there helping out? Or is taking Egypt really worth it? I mean, they can take Egypt and Jordan and Iraq all the way through fairly easily if they bring down those two units. And they've got so many offensives left in the cup. Yeah, we're going to do it. Bringing down a land unit and an air unit. That's some free victory points for the Italians that might make an, an, an effect later. And it will prevent... The, uh, the allies from easily coming back over here and taking Libya or coming back and taking attacks from this direction. Okay, so that was the collapse procedure. That was the Italians' home front. Still can't trigger anything from the interruptions. There is a Japanese air upgrade, which... Oh, no! Oh, no! That's awful! That's absolutely terrible! They can't use it yet. They've been trying to put this stupid guy out, but we just kept having access after access after access ability coming up. Damn it. I think they have to throw away the air unit and put this guy in reserve only because this guy's worth two points and the air unit's only worth one. That's just, just terrible luck for the Japanese. All they needed was an allied thing to come out so that they could interrupt with that air unit. Instead, we get a German fleet going to get placed in the Ruhr. And again, that's another axis disadvantage of having so many things in the cup. You can't get your interruptions to happen. Next out is a Soviet flag, which they must use. That Soviet flag is going to be used to build something or... All right, I think we figured out what the Soviets want to do with this flag. It was difficult, but it real I realized uh, Czechoslovakia is currently not garrisoned by the Germans, so the Soviets can actually attack it and try to get a cube in there uh, without declaring war on the fascists. So that's what they're going to do. First, they're going to attempt uh, maneuvers with this cube. Uh, do they have one in here? They do actually have one in there. So 2d6 plus 1 minus 1 because they're at military purges, so this is a fives or better, and it's a fail. So they get another cube in maneuvers, and that is gone. Does Germany want to interrupt? Well, they have no flag, so they definitely want to interrupt and do something here. And I think that something is attack France some more. They got to get them to collapse here. Or at least take Lorraine and Brittany, and that's a guaranteed surrender. So they're going to attempt maneuvers themselves, and that is also a failure. Oh, man. All right. Well, Germany's flag is gone at least. And Japan can't interrupt because they're still waiting on their stupid uh, uh, air unit to come out. Uh, so then that means that the Soviets are about to go. I don't think there's a... There is a Japanese air force in there. They're hoping that it comes out. Or they're also trying to build it. Uh, a German home front. That one is going to be at a minus one. 3d6 minus one. Oh, they lose it. Stability down for the Germans. Now, Germany, Italy, the United States, and France are all down. Germany can now move all of its units around. They have no air force. That's a giant, just awful mess here. But they're going to move their units around in a way, uh, probably just boom both back to Paris at the moment. Um, and actually, this unit in Berlin doesn't need to be in Berlin anymore. It can go to Czechoslovakia, because now we can guard against these two things. And yeah, that's probably okay. I mean, it does leave Berlin open if they try to double attack through here, but we've got air cover. It's Even though they have tank superiority, they're probably going to want to throw an augmentation in there to guarantee they have air superiority. I don't know. I think that's okay. All right. Next out of the cup is an American flag. 
The Americans have already increased their commitment this turn. They are cut off down here. They can't do much with that, and they desperately need to rebuild what they lost. So I think that's what they're going to do here. They're going to attempt maneuvers, and they're at 3d6. That is also a failure, because they even though with the plus one in the, in the maneuvers box here. Wow, lots of failures by the three dice crew. All right, next out of the cup is a German fortification. That is great. That's kind of what they were hoping for. Now they can put that fortification in Berlin just in case. Just in case. We'll move it later when we're feeling a little bit more sure about where the enemy might come and attack. Like, I kind of want to put it in the Ruhr to free up the unit to go and defend over here, but no. We got it, we got it. I mean, the Russians are looking real scary over here. They have tank superiority. They can roll right through. The Germans have no air force. Yeah, they're in trouble right now uh, if the Russians decide to get up. But here's the French flag. The French, I guess are going to try and build something. That's the only thing they can do. 1d6, it's a huge failure. All right. Uh, so that's a lot. Oh, that's actually going to propaganda. Um, and, I mean, that's what they had to do. They had to try to get one unit out there to slow down the Germans. But there's the German flag. What do they do with it? Man, I guess they got to conquer France if they can. Here's 3d6 for maneuver check. They got it that time. Cube is out. And they're declaring an attack on Brittany, because why not? I, man, they wish they had some air units, but they don't have it. So instead, it's just two dice versus one die minus one. Here's the two dice from the Germans. Oh, actually, oh no, if they attack Brittany, then the air units from the British come in. They're going to attack Lorraine, absolutely, uh, for sure here. So attacking Lorraine is 2d6, is a seven, versus one die minus one is a one. So that is an attack which is successful. So the Germans gain an extra cube, and they gain a flag for conquering a uh, enemy home area. And that reduces the democracy total, and increases the French negative victory points, and increases the German victory points, and the fascist victory points. Okay, so that was Germany's flag. They got one in reserve. Now we go back to the cup, because the Soviets are still waiting for their home front to come out before they push to total war. There's the British uh, units here. They can put them anywhere, and they are allied with the, uh, oh yes, that's right. So they're allied with the Americans, but the French broke their alliance with the British. So the British can't put their units in France, but they can put them in Denmark. I mean, just to screw with the Germans, right? You don't need them in, in, uh, in the United Kingdom anymore. Um, they could also put them in Norway and attack Sweden or something, but... Uh, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. They want to bring them down to South Africa and stop. The reason is they got to get to Egypt before Italy gets a flag here. And that's what the British are hoping to have happen. That's way more valuable to, to hold on to than Denmark is to threaten. All right, next out of the cup, speak of the devil, Italy is going to uh, declare an attack against the Egypt area. So they move in. They've got air support. That is 3d6 versus 1 die. Uh, oh, this is not augmented, by the way. The Italians will not augment this. They might as well take advantage of the fact that there's no defenders. So that is a four versus a five, and they're kicked back. Well, they were hoping to get lucky, but it didn't work. Now they're going to use a second augmentation for another attack with the same guys here. And that is, again, uh, 3d6, which is a four again, and a one. That time it's a success. The Italians have conquered Egypt, which is not a uh, colony with a victory uh, with a with a resource so the british do not have to take any st uh, stability checks and the italians don't get any flags but they do get a cube and the fascists also go up by one oops to five there or to 25 all right now the italians are done with their offensive that goes to available and we go to the cup because the germans can't interrupt another italian blitz oh no here we go the italians are moving along they're trying to get more victory points shut out the british the british from coming back through iraq uh without a invasion if the british can just get their units into iraq then they can uh, reinforce it in the future and the americans can help but right now here's another non-augmented attack by the italians 3d6 that's a 5 1d for the defending forces is a 3 no more british cube another italian cube they're just plowing their way through the desert here with nobody to stop them 
The Brits lose another point, and I think the Democracies lost two points. I forgot to put them down. I'll redo all these in a second. I'm just trying to keep them close. And for their final trick, the last military action they have here, they're going to go into Iraq, and that's 3d6. That's a 7. Impossible to defeat. The Iraqi army, or the Iraqi defense army, is gone. And that is, again, another victory point for the fascists and the... Uh, and, and Oh, actually, the British should be at two right now because they do have uh, both Norway and Denmark. All right, let's count these up one more time. Hold on one second. All right, this should be correct now. France is minus five for the four here plus the one over here. Germany and Japan are each at ten. Italy is at seven. Uh, the, the, the British are still at two for up here. Oh, but they're actually minus one for Egypt. So they should be down by one and therefore the democracy should be down by one. Okay. So that's correct. 27 to 5 to 1 right now is the current score. The Americans need to get in the game. Lucky for the Allies, there is a lot of time for the Americans to make up the difference here. And the fascists are probably going to have to start fighting against this, the communists. The communists are obviously, if they don't do something soon, then uh, they are going to have a very hard time. Uh, winning the game because they're only at five. They need to take points away from the fascists and hopefully the allies will be working with them to that effect. But that having been said, the Italians use both of that offensive's military action. So we go to the cup again because they can't interrupt. Oh, right. A civil war. This is something Japan would have liked to take care of, but does not have the air power. They kept the air power in the Hawaiian Islands. I'm not sure if that was the best move in hindsight just because we're having such a hard time getting the other air unit out of the cup for Japan. They need it to do other things over here, but right now they're very limited. So uh, the Chinese communists are going to attempt expansion, and I think that's at two effectiveness. Yes, it's at two effectiveness, and right now the patron for the Chinese communists is actually the Germans, so they get to do to pick, you know, Gansu uh, to expand into. Here's the 2d6 roll. It is a success. Unfortunately, the Japanese lose a cube, and the Chinese communists expand into Gansu. Um, so that is that, and now we move into the civil war in Spain. Here is the French and American side, which gets a six, and the Italian-led side gets a five. That is a um, marginal victory, so the Italian influence goes away, Italian aid, and uh, yeah, then the, the Spanish civil war continues. It's a real bloody war. That's what, what can you say? All right, next out of the cup. An American offensive. They are at war. They are at mobilization. They want to build some stuff up. Speaking of stuff, they need some carriers, but they could also use some troops. But damn, they can't. The, the, they could actually go to Denmark now that I think about it. But is it worth containing that side versus trying to reestablish communications? They're going to lose all this down here if they're not careful. This is there in the what, what might be called a dilly of a pickle, but they have a lot more offensives coming up. So the first thing they're going to do is uh, take a carrier upgrade and throw that in reserve and spend both of their military actions on that carrier upgrade because then at least they'll have a chance at taking back the Hawaiian Islands sometime in the near future. Uh, they've got a fleet on the turn track that could get them carrier parity at least. Let's see. The next thing out of the out of the cup is the crisis, which there's no way that that is the end of the game. Nope, there's way more than enough German stuff in there, more than enough Japanese stuff. So we put that back in and we keep going. I forgot. Sorry, the Germans are definitely going to interrupt after that crisis. And they're going to use that, uh, they're going to try for maneuvers here. They got it. Boom. Yep, they got it. It's usually fairly obvious. And they're going to get an air unit because they lost a lot of their air units fighting the French and the British earlier. Uh, and now we go back to the cup. No, the Americans inter interrupt to get this out of their uh, reserve area. And they flip over the fleet there in California. They could do it again and get the fleet from Washington, D.C. back here. So far, the Germans aren't doing a large... Um, uh, sub strategy because the Italians won the Mediterranean War so strongly that they've basically already cut off two resources. They could cut off Canada and lend lease from the U.S., but if they cut off lend lease from the U.S., all it does is have the U.S. spend it instead. That's not as effective. It's it's effective, but it's not as effective as stopping a resource from being collected. Period. But you know, two builds to stop one resource, it's a lot and. Um, you know, even though they're kind of winning, they're kind of winning this naval battle a couple of times. The, the British are beaten down. So we'll see. OK, so the, since the Americans interrupted, the Germans can now interrupt and put out their air unit. And now we go back to the cup. 
There's a Japanese upgrade, and they will, of course, upgrade their carrier at Hainan. Now, all of their carriers are upgraded, fully upgraded. Next, we go to the cup and a Soviet air upgrade. You know what? The Soviets are going to stick this down with this other set of units here. Uh, that's that's looking pretty useful. They could take Hungary and take a point away from the fascists and give one to them. That's a two two point swing there for them. Uh, if they can get some of their offensives or anything to come out of the cup. There's a Japanese offensive. They've kind of been waiting for that. The first point is immediately going to be used to stick this other air force in the force pool. They need it to come out so they can clear out their reserve. So they've got two more. What are they going to do with it? Uh, do they attack again, Sue? I don't think so. Do they attack the Philippines without air support? God, that seems like a nightmare. Doesn't it? Maybe they just build with it. They can't build anything. Oh, that's awful. Then you know what they're going to do? They're going to attack the fleet in California. Yeah. One, two, one, two, a naval attack on California, hitting the brand new carrier fleet there, bringing in their long-ranged air to help them. That's the move, I think. They should have they should have built up the unit in the East Coast now that I'm looking at this. But there's two naval units, so uh, the submarine can absorb the, the, the hit after the carrier takes a hit. So it's not, not awful for them. So they're going to augment this by plus one. They want to kill those units. So here is air superiority plus one for, this, for the Japanese. They've got a seven. The Americans have carrier inferiority, rather, uh, carrier superiority for the Japanese. Brings them down to one die, and that gets them a two. A seven to two is a three to one. One, two, three. They're all gone. That is another disaster, I think, here. No, I'm sorry. It's not a disaster because they inflict, inflicted exactly the same losses as the defender had. You have to inflict more losses than the defender can take. So, yeah, there was nowhere for them to retreat? Really? Or, you know what? Is there? I'm sorry. Let's back up a step. They can take two losses, including this submarine, and then the third loss is absorbed by this unit retreating through the map. Can they retreat through the map? To the Can Panama Canal? That's an interesting... Let me check the retreat rules. That's, Yeah, it does look like they would be allowed to retreat either to the Aleutian Islands or all the way over to the, uh, to the American Eastern Seaboard. There's nothing about not using map connectors as part of a retreat, and I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, and there's also nothing about, like, retreating back through the path that the opponent came from. I mean, the ocean's huge. You can definitely retreat back that way if you need to. So, okay, so that is another very successful... Japanese attack on the Americans. They're successfully keeping them out of the Pacific, but at what cost? They can't do shit over here because they screwed up their production. That's too bad. All right, send that to available and go straight to the next one out of the cup. It's a German offensive and probably the last thing they need to do here. They're going to spend one, just one of their military actions to attack Brittany. They're going to bring in their armor. They don't need to bring in their infantry. Um, but do they do it just in case? No, this should be fine. We bring in the Air Force, the British bring in their Air Force, and uh, they bring in both their Air Forces. Maybe they do need to augment it. Uh... <sighs> no, they won't augment it. They're going to take the chance. Okay, 2d6 versus 2d6. Here's the German roll. Oh, they... oh, look at that. Seven. Beautiful. Seven to four. Seven to four. The British... No, this is a losing battle. They're going to retreat both their units rather than take a loss. There's no reason to take that loss. The French are doomed. It's just a matter of time. They stalled the Germans a lot. This is fine. This is fine. All right. To that end, the land battle is now a 3d6 versus a 1d6 minus 1. That is a 7 to a 1. Massive, massive defeat. The Germans have conquered Brittany. The uh, the French forces are removed as part of the French surrender. Let's go through the surrender rolls real, rolls real quick, just in case you want to learn how these work. Um, so a surrender happens here not because the French stability made it to collapse, but because a power also immediately surrenders if at any time it can controls none of its home areas. So that is the reason for the surrender here. Each enemy power gains a flag. So Germany, Italy, and the uh, Japanese. You know, I don't think... Did I give a power to all three of those the last time French collapsed? I don't think I did. I'm going to try to fix that. This is, is actually hours ago, so I don't remember. Um, 
So I thought I only gave Germany a, f- a, p- a flag because they were the one that forced the surrender. But I think the other powers that are also considered enemies because they're at war with them have to also get the flag. All right. Um, allies with land units and players controlled areas or air naval units and powers bases making control of those areas. So uh, the um, there's no allies for France, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, powers allies conduct stability tests ignored. Remove powers counters and cubes from the game, including base markers and counters in the action cup. Victory marker stays in the victory point track. Place neutral cubes in each of the powers home or colony areas not controlled by another power. So we get some neutral cubes here. We put one into Syria and we put one in French North Africa and Indochina already has one that's been controlled there. So that is a total of eight negative points for the democracies until they do do something about this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So France is permanently at minus eight points unless the allies uh, manage to liberate some of those areas. Uh, let's see. And that updates Germany at plus one. And it updates the democracies down one, two, three. So they should be here in the negative. Um, and next up, neutral cubes were placed. Let's see. Home or colony area is not controlled by another power. I'm pretty sure the areas that are subject to diplomatic opportunity are only home areas. I'm pretty sure French North Africa and Syria both always go neutral. Yes, only the home areas would be subject to diplomatic opportunity to create a Vichy-style state. Um, so, areas are now in controlled place. Unowned base markers in each of the powers printed bases. France has none. Units that can no longer legally occupy an area affected must immediately retreat. That doesn't apply. So now we flip the stability marker and we indicate that the Germans have forced the surrender of the French. And so as a result, let me just move these guys over here for a second to get this underneath. Uh, if they force one other power to surrender, i.e. the British, then the game ends immediately. And because they have just a massive lead, they will win. Um, so we'll see if they can do that. I'm pretty sure the Soviets are going to try not to let that happen, but we shall see. So that's the end of that collapse. That was the Germans' first military action. They have one more. They're going to use it as a deployment. Well, first regrouping. They're going to go back to Paris. And then they're going to consider their options. They could turn and launch a massive war against the Soviets, uh, which would be the historical course, uh, or they could continue to attempt to knock down the British, but the British are at pretty strong stability here, and they can never get to Canada. It's impossible for the Germans to invade Canada, so it's impossible for the British to ever surrender because they lose all their home areas. That's an interesting quirk to this system. I think... <laughs> oh, no! Oh, really? Okay. I hadn't seen that before, but this is an interesting play by the Germans. They're going to pick a deployment action, and they're going to do a land movement to here, a naval movement to Finland, with all of these guys that were just in France. Uh, the guy... That's in Berlin is instead going to defend Paris against a possible invasion from the British. Yeah, that could sneak attack Moscow and like give him a gut punch. That's an interesting play. Because they're way out of position to deal with that. Yeah. I mean, obviously the tanks don't really do much up there, do they? So I think I'm bringing the tanks back. Um, and we'll put them in Czechoslovakia, because that way the Germans can attack from Czechoslovakia. Uh, that makes sense. Together with this army. If I put them separately, it takes two military actions to send them both into Poland. We don't want that. We want them both ready to go. Oh, you know what? I can't move the fortress the way that I just did. Obviously, it has to go back in the cup. Ooh. That's a problem. In that case, I don't think we can threaten that. Keep that in Berlin. Put this in the cup because we want to move it out of Berlin now that we've done dealt with France. But we're going to keep an army here to defend against a possible British invasion. And we maybe keep an air force in Benelux to protect this entire front 
against these forces. This is still giving us options when it comes to invading or fighting in Poland or Silesia if we need it. So that's good enough. So that's the deployment part of the second action. Finland is a sneaky attack, and it never occurred to me until now. If the Soviets were at wavering, I might try it to get to Moscow and just do a big punch to them, but I don't think it's worthwhile. So that's the that's there done. And next, we pull from the cup unless... Nope, the Soviets are still waiting for their force uh, uh, home front to come out. There's something good for the Germans. They needed that extra army to go somewhere. Maybe to threaten in Finland, but I think it's going to go in Hungary. They don't want to give that up easily. And they do want to threaten Romania, but they got to keep consolidated and they got to worry about the British here. Uh, do they keep an extra army in Paris or the Ruhr, rather, with the intention of threatening an invasion of the British Isles? Because that two armies is much better for an invasion than one. Um, you can tie and still win the invasion, assuming the enemy only has their own army. So, yeah, what do we do? Decisions, decisions. I think we got to put it in Silesia, honestly. Now we've got some res resiliency here if the if the German if the Russians decide to attack and they probably will. All right. Because remember, if the Soviets declare war, then the Germans can't surprise attack them and there's no battle where they get a big penalty to their attack. So the Soviets probably do want to attack the Germans, but they only have the one flag and they really want to hit total war this turn. That's a tough sell for them. All right, next out of the cup is an American offensive. The Americans could build some stuff up. Uh, they just lost horribly in there. And I think they have to. Yeah, they're going to build... <laughs> this is so... so. Maybe they give up on the Pacific and just start fighting the Axis in Europe? But, I mean, right now, the Axis could win just on the Pacific map, right? They have enough victory points over there. Even if Italy and Germany collapse, the Japanese might still have enough victory points to win if the, Itali if the Americans don't do anything about it. And they have to do something about it. These upgrade markers, you only get to build them once per turn if you don't do this. Uh, so they're going to have to do it there. The Germans interrupt. Their home front is done, right? Yeah, they're going to go for total war. 3d6. Nope, they're going to go for a propaganda first. Here we go. Propaganda. Ooh, they failed. Okay, uh, well, they tried. The Americans are going to interrupt and upgrade. Oops, I did a surrender, send a counter mix again by accident. I just need to use the hotkeys. Okay, so these guys are flipping here in the Washington. They will move over to California when they're ready to move over and fight the Japanese, but right now they are not. Uh, okay, all of that is great. That means the Italians can come in and do something. Their stability is a little weak. They're going to... Luce is going to try to get that stability back up for them. They're going to fail. Uh, okay, propaganda failing all around. Actually, the French cube here can go away. Um, and we go back to the cup. Luce is gone. The Japanese air unit that they've been waiting for for forever. Here it is, Guangdong. Actually, no, they're going to build it in, obviously they have to build it in Tokyo and then it, it can deploy to wherever they want to move it. I think they're going to move it directly to the South China Sea because they need to have it in in a base in range of the Philippines in order to support it, or Java, for example. Um, now, they have two more offensives in the cup, it looks like, so they're going to need it. So hopefully they can get it upgraded very soon. There's the Soviet offensive. Hmm. Hmm. I think this is an attack on Hungary. They they don't they can't declare war with an offensive, so they can't directly fight the Germans. They could actually attack Yugoslavia, uh, and I think that might be what they want to do. They want to grab that Yugoslav resource before the Italians can use it. You know what? The Italians should have used it last turn. Uh but they built everything they could possibly build, if I remember correctly, so they couldn't use it. So that's that. It is what it is. So anyway, the Soviets are going to attack Yugoslavia. They're not at war with the Italians. It is a provocation against the Italians and all of their allies. So Germany gets a flag. This isn't great to give all these guys flags, obviously, but the Soviets would rather have that resource 
than care about whether they get flags. And the Japanese flag goes in the cup. So they're going to augment it. And they are at uh, war military reform posture, so they are allowed to do this without penalty. So they're bringing in both of these infantry units and the air for support, and they're augmenting it with a plus one. So that's 3d6 plus one versus 2d6 plus one for the uh, adverse terrain. Here we go. 3d6 plus one is a five. 2d6 plus one is a five. It's a tie. The Yugoslav army is gone. One of the Soviet armies is gone. And this switches out for a Soviet cube. So the Soviets gain a victory point for the first time in basically forever. The German, the uh, fascists and the Italians lose one. Now, I think they go back to defend Romania because Romania is more important overall. That Yugoslav resource is nice, but they don't see the Italians coming all the way back here and then attacking it using two actions to do that. They don't see that happening. So that's what they did that for. They spent both of that on that augmented attack. The Germans are going to let the Italians interrupt. No, the Japanese are interrupting. Get this stupid thing upgraded. Yes, finally. Okay, now we go to the cup. And the Soviet home front is still nowhere to be found. Another German fortress appears. That one... Oh, that's the German fortress. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that's the German fortress that they put in there earlier. That one is either going to go to the Ruhr or to Paris. The Ruhr is much more much more deadly for the Germans to lose. So they're going to put that in the Ruhr to defend it. Um, now we go to the cup again, because that was another... Oh, another German attack. <sighs> or they could just build units. I think they're going to use it to build. They're going to get some tanks. Yep, they're going to use that to put tanks into the cup. Oh, that sucks. That sucks that they couldn't, set, they couldn't use their reserve in time. But they want those tanks built. What could they build instead? Two... Submarines? I guess, you know, actually, they could build two submarines and maybe cut the British off from aid and cause the Americans a big headache when they have to drive their way through. Alternatively, they could put an air in a submarine, but one submarine's not very useful, is it? Oh. All right. They're going to put both submarines in, in the cup with that offensive because they are not ready to attack the Soviets. They want at least armor parity before they launch this attack. <clears throat> so that goes to available, and the Germans can't interrupt. The Soviets are still biding their time. The Italians are going to attempt propaganda. 1d6 plus 1 is a success. The Italians get their stability back up. Good job. Again, too many fascist things in the cup. The, the, the fascists can't interrupt. They want to interrupt, but can't. There we go. An American offensive, which I think, again, is they're not in a position to actually attack anything, so they are absolutely just going to continue building things, including their carrier upgrade. So that it goes to available. The Germans interrupt to use their flag. Um, and they are going to use that on propaganda. That's a success this time. They're back to stable. And... The Italians also won their propaganda, so that goes there. Okay. Now the Americans will interrupt, and... Ooh, I keep hitting that stupid button. It needs to go to force pool, not countermix. Now they can't upgrade any of the things over here, remember, because they can't draw a line of communication to it. So instead, they're just going to upgrade the other fleet that's over here in the United States. All right. With that, uh, that was uh, allows Ilduce to interrupt. And what are they going to do? Are they going to go to total war? That's craziness. No, Italy can't go to total war yet. They will definitely collapse if they do that. But they don't have anything to build except for something they can't afford to build. So what could Ilduce do? He could try to get Yugoslavia back with diplomacy. That's not an awful choice. He can also try for maneuvers and send him into Persia to get that resource. But I think that diplomacy is how they got Yugoslavia in the first place. They're going to try it again because the Soviets didn't leave anything there. If they'd left an army there, it would have prevented diplomacy, but then opened up diplomacy for the Russians uh, to lose Romania. So obviously, Romania is more valuable. So here's uh, sixes only. No, it would be sevens only because they're on the... Oh, this is Italy. I'm sorry. This isn't the, the Soviet Union. This is sixes only to get Yugoslavia. Here we go. They got it. They got it back. And uh, the Soviets bloodied their nose and they got nothing for it in the end. I mean, they forced Ilduce to do that. Uh, but you know what? That was probably in their favor in the end. All right. 
now we're going to the cup because the the Soviets still want their force pool to come out. Uh, not their force pool. They want their uh, they want their uh, home front to come out. But there's an American submarine. They put it in California. It's just going to get attacked again. I don't know if they use it to get attacked like that. You know where they're going to put it? They're going to put it someplace safe. They're going to build it, but they're going to build it on the on the Pacific side. They can build it all the way over here. But that can still be hit from the Hawaiian Islands. All right. They're going to put it in to... Oh, they can put it over near Portugal, can't they? Within two of Portugal. This would at least prevent the Italians from coming out. I mean, yeah. The Italians can naval move all the way around to this coast if they wanted to, can't they? All the requirement is that the naval move, every sea area has to be within two spaces of a friendly base. All the German bases in France now allow the Italian fleet to come out and occupy these areas along with those German subs. So the American sub in the Western Med stops that from happening. So that's that's pretty clever. That's what they're doing. That actually has an effect. They might rather use it over here in the Pacific later when it might have a better effect, but right now... It's keeping the Italians in the med until they deal with the subs. Next out of the cup, a German offensive. Huh. This is another situation where they had to decide what to build. This time they have a reserve clear, so this time they're going to build the army, the armor. The reason they didn't last time is because they would have had to put it in the cup, and it might have got stuck in the cup, which would prevent them from building it again in the actual uh, build phase um, next turn. They're still so now. Now they're ready to actually attack because they have armor parity with the Soviets. I'm sorry. They will very soon. Not yet, because they just put it in reserve with both of those uh, um, military actions. Now the Soviets are thinking, you know, how likely is it that like the turn is going to end? And it's not likely. Their home front is still coming out here because um, they have not seen it yet. There's a British tank upgrade. They can do that. Boom. They don't have any other units to do it on, so that's great. And now the Germans are going to interrupt and send uh, their guys upgraded here in Czechoslovakia. And now they're ready to declare war. Let's see. Another German air. Excellent. Uh, they've got the one defending on this front. Now they've got an extra one on this front. I think they put it in Czechoslovakia, though, because that gives them more options. And next, a Juro Japanese flag, huh? What's Japan going to do with their flag? I think they're keeping it in reserve. They're at total war. They need every flag they can get to keep their stability up. So they're going to hold that there and maybe keep it until next turn. They don't have anything to build with it anyway, and they can't launch an attack right now with it uh, meaningfully, except maybe against Hubei. Um, but right now, their air unit is not set up for that. Actually, it is, because it's flipped over to a stronger side. It could be used in attack on Hubei, but that doesn't really benefit them. Uh, right now, the Germans are helping. Okay, so they put that in reserve. Next, we come out with another Japanese flag. Huh. They can't attempt diplomacy in Siam because... Well, they could, but it'd be sixes only because it's controlled by an enemy power. Japanese flag. Japanese flag. I think, honestly, they're going to pressure the Germans. The Germans... Or no, they've got a Cuban maneuvers. Let's do maneuvers. Here we go. 2d6 maneuvers. It's a fail. They get another cube in their maneuvers track. Well, they tried. Now, the Japanese, as we just said, they have more offensives. Instead of going after the Philippines, they've got Hawaii locked down for quite a while until the Americans get back in here. Did they go for India right now while there's no British to stop them and they already have a pretty clear path to it? Because if they can get maneuvers right now, and get a deployment down to Indochina, they can attack and take India pretty easily. And that could weaken the British. That's a stability test against the Brits for losing it. Now, the Brits are also at limited supply, but actually limited supply applies to units only. It doesn't apply to the defending garrisons. But um, I think the Japanese can't interrupt because they just used a flag, but let's see what happens next. Crisis which we're going to look in here and see four German things. Therefore, we do not uh, 
end of the turn. So that goes back in. We pull again. Oh, a second German Fortress. One per area. You can't put more than one, so I think we put that in Paris. It's now very well defended against a possible British or American counterattack. I think the next... I kind of wish that the Germans now had attacked into the into the North Sea again, but they did that so much. The Brits are reduced, but yeah, um, they are what they are. The Americans probably need to get over to Scotland, even though they really want these forces for the Pacific. I think Scotland, because the British are actually in danger of getting attacked and, and uh, conquered here. All right, next out of the cup. There's another Japanese air. They're going to put it in Indochina. It's going to build builds in Tokyo, and it's going to go all the way down to Indochina. And then I think they're going to interrupt for maneuvers. 2d6 plus 2, thanks to the cubes here, gets them a success. They're going to do deployment. Deployment is going to allow to move this army down here to Indochina. These two armies... You can't invade the Philippines with two anyway. You can't put more than one in Indochina. I don't know what these armies are going to do. I guess they're staying where they are for now. Um, and yeah, they don't want to move anything else except this base they're going to pick up and put into reserve, into the into the cup. They don't need the base in Hokkaido anymore. Oh, you know what? This whole thing... Ah, god damn it. This whole thing, the Japanese were not allowed to leave the unit uh, in Hawaii because I didn't put a base there. That didn't actually affect the attack on California, though, I don't think, because uh, there was uh, only one American fleet there and no carriers. Or was there carriers? Crap. Well, it's too late now. Uh, this fleet will have rebased after the combat, maybe to the Marshall Islands. I mean, it could have gone to Hokkaido. But anyway, this turn we're deploying, so we can put it anywhere we want. Could put it in the Gulf of Siam and increase our flexibility over there, but that's not great. We're putting it in the uh, in truck. That gives us the ability to attack these bases over here. Lots of bases in range that they could attack with that. And because there's no defenders, it's automatically successful if you attack a base with no defenders. Okay, so that goes to the cup. The Soviets are getting a little nervous here. They want that home front. Instead, we get the Japanese offensive we were looking for. So the Japanese are attacking Burma. And they're going to bring in the Air Force. So this is three to one plus one. Three dice. Oh, one plus one is a four. It's a tie. Oh, gosh. The Japanese get pushed right the hell back. Burmese Defense Force. Okay. Well, the second one will be a deployment, I guess. And we'll move this other infantry army over here. Hmm. Yep, so that happened. Send to available. And now we can pull from the cup again. There's a German flag. Is this the moment they've been waiting for? Yeah, I think they are deciding to go to total war. 3d6 is a success. That goes to available. They go to total war. The Soviets are the only ones that get provoked because the British and, well, the French are gone. The British are already at war with them, so they don't get provoked. That gives the Soviets an extra flag that goes in the cup. And the Germans now get uh, commitment offensives, including three. One, two, three. They can go all the way to Berlin and Ruhr and Paris. Uh, so commitment offensives for them mean that they get three offensives. One goes into reserve. One goes into the cup, and one goes into the cup. And then they choose some more stuff from their force pool. Uh, four more things. <sighs> they build Fortress Europe. They've got the two subs they might need. I think they're going for an all-out war. <sighs> this is a tough call. I think they definitely want an extra air force. They've been short air forces. An extra fortress can't hurt. It frees up their armies to move. Uh, other places. Do they get logistics bases to fight in the Soviet Union? I almost think they do. Two logistics bases or one? I think they get one logistics base and one more infantry. Or do they get a second tank upgrade? You know what? I think that's what they get. I think they get the second tank upgrade. 
Now they can do a lot more with that. All right. So that was their commitment increase. The Soviets are now a little bit concerned. I think they're going to interrupt right now and they're going to total war as well. Or at least they're going to try. They're going to lose their cubes on maneuver and that sucks for them. I think they may have already lost it, actually. Um, didn't they do a maneuver into uh, Yugoslavia? I'm pretty sure that was a maneuver attack. No, they actually used an offensive for that, now that I remember. But they're going to attempt to increase their commitment sixes only, unfortunately for them. They didn't get it. So, they do have one more flag still in the cup. They'd like to hit total war now, but it is what it is. The Germans will now interrupt, and they will declare war on the Soviets. The Soviets are surprised! I mean, they shouldn't be, but they are. Surprise! We're coming at you, bro. And uh, they're coming in with uh, three military actions. They're going to do a plus two augmentation. They've got their air unit. Oops, we've got that cube stuck under here. Get that back in Czechoslovakia. The Italians are helping because they are also uh, joining this war. So we need a bunch of cubes up here, don't we? We need an Italian cube. We need a German cube. We need a Japanese cube. And we need the communist cube. There we go. Super global war now happening here. And we do the air war first. It is two dice plus two against one die minus one. Yeah, we want to we wanna triumph here. Let's see what we can do. Or at least a lot of tank deaths. So, two dice plus two. That's a seven. One die minus one. Or sorry, two dice minus one for the Soviets. That's a three. Seven to three is two losses. That's more than they can afford. So they have to lose the air. It can't just retreat for one loss. So now we've got three dice plus two versus two dice minus one for surprise. Three dice plus two. That's an eight. Two dice minus one. Is it two? Four losses! Oh no! That wasn't quite a triumph, but it was great. One loss, two loss, three loss, and four loss is a retreat to Belarusia. Huge, huge blow to the Soviets. They were not, they were not ready. They wanted to get to total war so that they were ready for this. They could not do it. But now that they are at war, it'll be easy to get to total war. No problem, they say. All right, so that cube is gone. The Germans gain a cube in Poland. The Soviets lose one. And the uh, Germans gain one. And the fascists gain one. And I think they do not regroup. They stay there in Poland. And the Italian air stays there too. Why not? All right. That was the German offensive. And the surprise attack, by the way, I'm sorry, gave the Soviets two flags, one in reserve and one in the cup. There we go. So we put this back to available. And they are absolutely interrupting right now to go to total war. Uh, and that brings out the Ural... Uh, special resource and the Soviets now gain commitment offensives and they get one, two, three commitment offensives. They would have gotten, they really wanted to get that Polish uh, resource for commitment offensives, but they didn't. So they get one, two, three. All right. Now they get to increase their force pool as well. And they're definitely going to put another land army upgrade. That's one, two, three, and maybe an air upgrade, or do they do a fortress? I think they do another fortress, four. They're going to do a lot of fighting and defending in the Soviet Union here, I think, in the near future, based on how the Germans are going here. All right. So, they interrupted to increase their commitment. That is not a provocation against anybody, because they're at war with the entire fascist army. So, that moves directly to the cup, a, so a German submarine pack. So, they are constructed here, and they're allowed to slip past the British, and head over to the Arctic Ocean. Um, and now, that is within two of a German uh, port, which is why they're allowed to do that. Next up, a German flag. Being at total war is a little concerning. They're going to put that thing in reserve and hope to hold it over towards next till next turn. I mean, they could use it to grab Ukraine, but I don't think that's worthwhile. I think right now, the last thing the Germans need is to collapse. So they are going to stay the course with stability and not go crazy with their flags. All right. Next out of the cup. Ah, where do they want to put their base? 
the Carolyn Islands seems like, well, the Hawaiian Islands is where we want it, right? That's where we decided. We want to put it there. Uh, it's it's built in, uh, in, in, the, in that place there. Deployed the normal way. They can deploy all the way right through here. Um, and they can deploy up through Hokkaido as well. Is all within two range of a friendly base. Now in the next deployment, we can get the, uh, the fleet back to the Hawaiian Islands and hold on there. All right, next out of the cup. Soviet offensive. Well, they don't have any good counterattack situations, and they desperately need to build things, so that's what they're going to do. They're going to put the tank upgrade directly into... Uh, they can't put it in reserve. Ew. Ew, ew, ew. Okay. Uh, they're going to put it in the cup, I guess, and then they've got one more. They're going to build a fortress onto the turn track. Not great, but they've got another offensive that they can use in the near future here. All right. Next, the Germans still don't want to use that flag for anything. It's too difficult. Although they'd have... You know what? It's only a two effectiveness. They're going to get two flags next time. Let's do as much damage as we can before the Soviets build back up. 2d6 uh, for effectiveness for the Germans attempting maneuvers. No. Ugh. Now they got a cube on maneuvers they're not going to use later. Probably. All right. Next out of the cup. The crisis marker. That could end the turn? Let's see. Uh, for the total war countries, they need four or more to continue. One, two, three, four. Uh, yep, four Soviets, so we continue. I only need one thing to pass in order to continue. There's a Japanese offensive. Well, now I think we're going to attack the Philippines or Java. Probably Java is much more valuable to get this close to the end of the turn. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, the... Offensive gives them three military actions. They're going to use two to start an invasion with this infantry army. They've already got the fleet in the sea where they needed it. They're going to bring the air unit uh, down as well to support. And then we're going to roll with a plus one for the uh, attacking forces and a minus one for the defending forces because they are uh, out of their limited supply. Uh, okay, so... 2d6 plus 1 for the attacking Japanese air. Do we want to augment it? Yeah, let's try to get a, a massive victory here. 2d6 plus 1 is very bad. That's a 3. 2d6 minus 1 is a 3. Damn it. That's, that's not the result the Japanese were hoping for, but because they augmented it, it does kill off the American air. Uh, that's not awful, I guess. That gives them air superiority which is pretty important on an invasion. Uh, it's going to be 3d6 against 2d6 straight up. Minus one because of limited combat, uh, limited uh, supply, but plus one because of the invasion and or terrain. Those don't stack. So here we go. 3d6 plus one is a six. 2d6 straight up is a six. Oh no. Damn. The Japanese can't catch a break. And the air unit retreats to the South China Sea. The Americans continue to hold Java. Just like that. All right, and the Japanese offensive is, is done. Okay. The Japanese armies have just, just got obliterated in situations where they should have been okay. Uh, I think the Soviets interrupt here. And they're going to bring out the tank army upgrade. That's 1-2, and they're going to put a infantry army into Belarusia. I think... Oh, I'm sorry. Not into Belarusia. That has to go in the cup. Sorry. Yeah. And then we go to the cup. And that's a German offensive. That's what they have been waiting for. They'd love to take Romania away from the Soviets and just get more, more, more resources for the German war machine. And I think that's what they're going to do. Do they want to do a two augmentation into Romania? That's a tough call. They also want to take the Ukraine and get some flags for themselves, but they'll do all that next turn. Let's take Romania this turn. So they're going to go in with a tank army. They don't need to bring both of them. That's kind of overkill. They are going to bring both air forces, however. That's not super overkill. The surprise marker, I'm sorry, gets to flip over and go uh, here on the communist side. Um, and uh, they're going to augment this plus two. They want to win this battle, kill the Air Force, kill the Army. Don't let it retreat. They need it to die. Now, they could attack Ukraine. 
No, we're just going to straight up murder these guys. All right, so 2d6 plus 2 for the Germans. Oh, God, a 3. 2d6 straight up for the Soviets is also a 3. Wow, okay. Well, the Italians can't take this loss because the attackers are the Germans, unfortunately. So the Germans and the Soviets each lose an air unit, but the Germans get air support from the Italians. So they still get to roll 3d6 plus 2 an 8, and the defenders roll 2d6 plus 1, a 7. They are retreating. <sighs> well, didn't go as expected for the Germans. The question is, do they head back to Poland? The Soviets have 1... Two, three, four, five. Two offensives left in the cup. They could take Romania back if they're not careful. Ugh. It's tough. It's tough, but they're gonna they're gonna retreat back to Poland. It's just much more effective to keep the armies together so you can attack with both of them. Although they don't have to. The, you can attack with one tank and get tank superiority right now against the Soviets, but that's going to end real quick with that in the in there. So yeah, they're going to retreat. And so is the Air Force, because it can guard both of these areas. Okay. Because of that, the Soviets are going to interrupt, and they're going to upgrade the Ukrainian force, which has the most flexibility here in the places they want it to have flexibility. All right. And next out of the cup is a British offensive. Well. Well, well, well. I think they'd love to attack this German sub, but they don't have the option because this fleet is not in a port. It's defending against these stupid Germans. <sighs> but you know what? They're going to do a deployment. They're going to do a deployment to Denmark or Norway. And just hit Sweden. I don't know. I think we're going to Denmark, though. And bring the air over to Denmark. Hmm. They could bring both air to Denmark and still provide air co cover for this place here. But then the Germans could bomb London. Not this turn, though. I think they're all out of offensives. Or maybe they have one more left. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. They've got one left. That's not enough to upgrade an air and bomb with it. Not really. Oh, yes, it is. Let's keep it there. Okay. The reason you don't send both over is it's, you know, it's madness. Although, you know what? No. They could deploy like this, like so. And then they have no more land units. Are you kidding me? The British, did they build a fort though? Yeah, but that's not coming out till next turn. That's real dangerous for the British. They can't take that risk. Just having the one force in Denmark there allows them to threaten an, an attack on the Ruhr. And right now, it would have armor superiority, which is enough to basically be valuable in and of itself. So that's their deployment. And then they get to build something. And it will be an air unit because they only get one other build. So that's going straight into reserve. That goes to available. And we go to the cup. German submarine definitely going out to block the Western approaches. And now the British are cut off from American aid, and so are the Soviets. The Soviets can't get aid from America. Oh, actually, they can, can't they? They can go through uh, maritime territory. If the Japanese had a sub, they could put it in the American West Coast, and that would block all aid coming through the Pacific. That would be brilliant right now. I always look at Japan like, did Japan want to build a sub? No, Japan doesn't want to build a sub. But right now, having a sub would be amazing. Actually, they could put a fleet out there having the Hawaiian Islands. Why didn't I think of that a while ago? Um, anyway, uh, because, because of that uh, submarine fleet, the air unit comes onto the board, and I guess it stays over London, just in case, and then we go back to the cup. There's a Soviet air unit. That's what they needed. They're going to put that in Belarusia. Or in the Ukraine gives them more options here. But if the Germans turn north, then they're in trouble. They got to keep it in Belarus just to be safe. All right, next out of the cup. 
the Soviet home front that they were waiting for for forever to go to total war after comes out of the cup damn near last. So here's their non, their home front stability test only does get two and it's at minus two. They're okay. That's a one. So they lose one stability. All right. And next, they get to deploy. So, deployment. I think they might pull some stuff back from Xinjiang. They don't care about losing that anymore. Where do they put this? Down in the Ukraine? Or in Moscow? Yeah, I think they put it in Moscow, to be honest. Just in case the Germans start blitzing through here and they don't get stuff out. I think they bring something back over there from Moscow. And I think the air unit does the same thing. They don't have to worry about... They could bring back all of this, actually. The Japanese aren't threatening them. And they just lost their whole land army, didn't they? Uh, yeah. So they're going to put this stuff down here. The air unit will go in the Ukraine. That gives them the option if, they're, if they get another offensive or a flag, they can use it. All right, next out of the cup, there's another Soviet infantry. They are... They are nothing if not resilient. And they're going to stick this one in Leningrad. They've now got a pretty good blockade here. Next out of the cup, the British offensive that they were waiting for. Yeah, I think they're trying to go for the Ruhr. They got to try and get lucky, right? Or do they build? They could build a fleet. They've got a fleet upgrade in the cup, I guess. No, they never built a fleet upgrade. Ugh. This is a nightmare for them. I think they have to attack. They've got to try to slow down the Germans. So they're going to attack into the Ruhr. They're going to do it with a plus one augmentation. The Germans are going to respond by bringing in air support from Benelux. So it's a 2d6 plus one versus 2d6. It's still in their favor there. That's a, a 7 for the British and a 6 for the Germans, forcing the air unit to retreat back to Benelux. That gives them air superiority and armor superiority. The only thing that the German defenders in the Ruhr have going for them is this fortress. So air superiority means 3d6 plus 1 for augmentation is a 7. The defending forces are at 2d6 minus 1 die thanks to the armor superiority, but it's 1d6 plus 1. So, they could get a 7 as well. Here we go. They got it! Oh no! The defending Germans hold strong! That is a tie. The, def the British flip and retreat to Denmark. The Germans decide to lose this infantry army. Thank God that they decided to, do to build defenses in, in depth in the Ruhr. And the British air unit returns back to Denmark. Wow! They looked so strong there, the British, with the sevens, two sevens for their air and their ground, and with the, the, the armor and air superiority. It was totally in their favor. But them's the breaks in Cataclysm. All right, next out of the cup. Soviets are going to try to retake Romania. This could be right before the end of the turn, and it will give them the resource, and the Germans won't get it. They need that. So they're going to spend both of the actions on this Romanian adventure and they'll use their tank army so that they take it even if they get a tie with the locals. So here we go, but the locals, I mean the German garrison forces that are too small to be noticed, but because the, uh, yeah, the, these guys can come in here and both augmentations are going in. 2d6 plus one is a four versus a four. Both air units are gone. Jeez. That's just an air attrition battle on the Eastern Front. The Germans are out of air forces now there. And now we get to the land battle, and it's a straight-up 2d6 versus 1d6 as well. Uh, straight up because of the adverse versus the care. Oh, there's no armor superiority at all. So it's 2d6 versus uh, 1d6 plus 1. Oh, that's a 7. 1d6 plus 1 is a 5. All right, so the uh, Germans are indeed kicked out. We got another swap here. All right. And then we go to the cup. What's next? A Soviet flag. Well, they are wavering. They're going to use this immediately to uh, in, do some propaganda, which they get 3d6 minus one for their current uh, political posture. They got it. Uh, that was it. Boom. Boom. They get their stability back up, and the Germans are one step further away from victory if they're trying to, you know, crush the Soviet Union. 
It's looking harder than initially projected. Next out of the cup is another Soviet flag. They're going to put that in reserve. They're in a decent position, and they want to hold on to this for total war home fronts next turn. Next out of the cup is a Japanese <laughs> land upgrade. Oops, that could have come a long time ago, but here it is. Better late than never, I guess. Send that to the force pool. You remember how I said you got to put those things in reserve? You'll regret it. Well, two times they tied with the defending armies, and because of that, they couldn't take the territory. They could have India and Java by now if they had that stupid tank army in position. All right, an Italian offensive is probably going to be used on builds. Um, one build to get this air unit back, uh, and it's going to go in reserve. The other one's going to be a deployment, because I don't think they need these guys in Iraq. Um, so they're going to redeploy them somewhere else. They could take French North Africa, possibility. Oh, you know what? The British have this unit down in South Africa I'd completely forgotten about. But I think that needs to go and defend Burma based on what the Japanese were doing. I don't think the British... Uh, the British did have a deployment to Denmark, so let's pretend that I remembered that and put them in Burma. Uh, if I was dedicated to one side, by the way, I would probably be making many fewer mistakes, but I'm trying to keep the strategies of three different sides in my head at the same time, some of which have three powers associated, so it's a little bit difficult, especially because sometimes I am doing this hours apart, like I did the first half of this turn six hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it going. Here we go. Okay, so the Italians are uh, doing the build with one, and they're redistributing, uh, redistributing um, these forces with the other. But where exactly are they going? Do they go to France to help defend the German areas there? And that also allows the um, Italians here to re redistribute here. Do they go to East Prussia? and start attacking the Baltic states and cover that flank. I think they go down to Yugoslavia, and I think the air unit in the Central Med joins them. No. One of the air units goes here, to Silesia, because what that'll allow them to do is attack Western Mediterranean in the near future, and this air unit can support and hunt those subs down. So... The question is, where did this army go? Do we put that in Yugoslavia as well? And I guess we put the air over here. This can be the Italians getting <laughs> Romania. The Germans won't be terribly happy about it, but it's better than the Soviets having it. Um, and it at least gets the Italians a path into Russia so they can help for what that's worth. All right. Uh, the Soviets want to keep their flag, so next out of the cup is the crisis marker that could very well end the turn, and it does. All right, end phase. This goes to the Japanese. This goes to the American holding box, German holding box. Well, this has just been crazy. I, I just, I love this game. So much crazy stuff happens. You have to rethink your plans and make new plans. And it's currently balanced on a knife's edge. The Americans are, like, knocked way the hell out. But they're knocked out a turn early. They still have three whole turns to build up. And starting this turn, they have 14 builds with which to play with every turn. Uh, and that is a crazy number, especially when that gets increased to 21 builds a turn, plus four free war offensives. That's Those are incredible numbers. So, that having been said, uh, this goes to the Soviet Union, this goes to the Italians. It's a shame they couldn't get that built out this turn. It's anybody's game, honestly, I think. Uh, the Germans could... could crush this, you know, keep the Soviets from winning. All you have to do to keep the Soviets from winning is keep them entangled so they can't take over all of Central and Southern uh, Europe and, and all the Middle East. And if they take Mongolia and Manchuria, those are extra, you know, points for them. Um, but if the Germans just keep them tying up defending their territory and the Allies come in and sweep into France and cause Italy to collapse they could easily wrest control of the game from the Germans before 1945. The question is will the fascists be able to end the game before then, or do they play to ride it out? Maybe they don't try to crush the Soviets. Maybe they just do as much as possible to uh, to slow them down. I mean, did the Germans build the fortress? Uh, they built three fortresses. They're in a pretty good position to do that. Maybe the Italians follow suit and build a fortress to help defend their areas. Both of the Japanese fortresses are out. 
they could just play a defensive game here. That might be, they might be deciding to play the long game. To do that, though, every flag has to go to propaganda, every single one, because it's going to be real rough over the next few turns facing those minus two stability tests, almost guaranteed to lower your stability. Throw in a few disasters, maybe a loss of a home area or two. It's real easy to collapse in this war. Let's see what happens. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll catch you on turn number five.